Chapter 2626, Silver Destroyer It took an unusual person to be able to see the twelve towers and five cities. That was especially true of the five cities. Only the people that could see them were allowed to enter. Hansen followed Lone Bamboo into White King City. It was different from Black King City. White King City was a giant, circular construct that sort of resembled an amphitheater in Rome. After the two entered, Hansen realized that it really was a large arena. Banks of seats surrounded the circular fighting pit. Currently, there wasn't a soul other than the two of them in the entire arena. There wasn't even a single creature. I thought there were Xenogeneics here. Why is there nobody here? Hansen asked, glancing around the empty stadium. He couldn't detect the presence of anything living. The creatures that were here most recently have all been killed, and new ones have not appeared yet. Wait a little bit. They will be here soon, Lone Bamboo said. He moved to sit down on a flight of stairs. Hansen followed him and sat down. They waited together for something to happen. Not much later, Hansen heard the sound of chains being rattled. He looked toward the arena. The gate leading into the arena began to rise, clanking its way into the air. When the gate opened, passage to and from White King City was closed off. Are we not allowed to leave? Hansen asked. White King City hosts death matches. Only when one team is destroyed will the match end. If you want to leave here, you will have no choice but to kill the Xenogeneics that oppose you, Lone Bamboo said. But we don't know what creature will be coming to face us. What if it is deified? Hansen asked. That's why I brought you with me, Lone Bamboo said with a hearty chuckle. Oh, D asterisk am in. You tricked me. Hansen looked at the arena's gate, hoping that whatever creature emerged wouldn't be deified. The gate rose, revealing the entrance to a dark tunnel. He couldn't see into that darkness, but he could hear the approaching footsteps. Shortly after, something came into view. It was a creature clad in silver armor. Its hands clutched a thin, silver sword. From the eye slit in the creature's helmet, a sinister red light glowed. It looks like our luck is not too shabby, Lone Bamboo laughed. You call this not too shabby? Hansen could see the monster clearly. A silver substance chain glinted faintly around the armored creature. It was a deified Xenogeneic. Primitive deified Xenogeneic Silver Destroyer. Based on the reading of the God Spirit Touch, this Xenogeneic has eight armor talents. If we can collect its Xenogeneic egg, perhaps we can raise it to larva class, Lone Bamboo said. Hansen's smile looked a little strained. Aren't we gambling with our lives here? What if the Xenogeneic is already at the transmutation or larva class already? We'd be dead for sure. The sky claimed the white jade jing a very long time ago, Lone Bamboo said calmly. We have conducted a great deal of research on White King City. Sky Chance's department has calculated that around 80% of the Xenogeneics here are King class. 10% of them are half deified. Less than 10% is deified. Plus, it is an even lower chance that you encounter a deified of a higher class. That is why I said we were so lucky. There was a very low chance of going up against a foe such as this. This is precisely what I wanted. As Lone Bamboo spoke, the Silver Destroyer reached the center of the arena. From there, it looked in their direction. Before Hansen could react, the Silver Destroyer raised the short sword in its hands. It thrust the blade toward Hansen, and its silver substance chain shot from the sword like needles. There are two people here. Why is it going after me first? Am I that unlucky? That thought remained firmly in Hansen's mind, but it did him little good. He had to act. Pang. The silver sword light hit Hansen, and his body exploded. At the same moment, Another Hansen appeared in a different portion of the arena. He was holding his six-core snake bow. He drew the bow, knocking a jade light to the string. He let go, firing the arrow toward the silver destroyer. Lone Bamboo then joined Hansen in the arena. His jade sword glowed with a sword light as he slashed at the silver destroyer. The silver destroyer swung its silver sword twice. Hansen's arrow and Lone Bamboo's sword lights were suddenly shattered. They hadn't even gotten close to their enemy. The Silver Destroyer's substance chains didn't seem to have a wide area of control, so Hansen and Lone Bamboo kept moving as they fought. They sprinted around White King City to avoid the attacks that came after them, continually searching for a way to counterattack. What the hell? His sword's moving a lot faster now, Hansen thought. He wasn't able to dodge the next strike. A silver sword light flashed right by his face, drawing a line of blood across his cheek. He felt it as the blow grated against his cheekbone. 
Its substance chain seemed to rely on speed to maintain their power, Lone Bamboo said, as he unleashed another sword light. But the Silver Destroyer swung its sword and broke that one too. Ha! Huh. Hansen used his other hand to draw a ghost teeth knife. He summoned a knife light and weaved a web of silks across the sky. He prepared to draw them down upon the Silver Destroyer. But Silver Destroyer continued to swing its small silver sword wildly, destroying any semblance of a knife silk net before it could even form. That surprised Hansen a great deal. So fast. Even with his excellent vision, he couldn't see how the Silver Destroyer was dispatching his silk web so fast. Lone Bamboo shouted. The third eye upon his forehead opened. His pupils turned a purple red, splitting into shapes that looked like cherry blossoms. Hansen remembered that Lone Bamboo's sky eye should have been plain red. When Hansen had seen the man's third eye before, it carried an intimidatingly murderous aura. That third eye was a thing of the past, though. Lone Bamboo had changed. And now Hansen understood. Lone Bamboo's third eye had changed because he became one with the body of the purple eye butterfly. For butterfly wings spread majestically from Lone Bamboo's back. His sky eye released a purple and red beam that looked like a substance chain. Hansen was familiar with that beam. It should have been a purple eye god light that could restrain others, but when Hansen brushed against that beam with his senses, it felt more dangerous and violent. It was different from the evil eye Hansen had seen before. The purple and red beam landed upon the Silver Destroyer. The Silver Destroyer swung its sword in a vain bid to break the god light, but the god light wasn't solid. The Silver Sword light hit the god light with pinpoint accuracy, but Lone Bamboo's destructive beam flew on anyway, completely unimpeded. The moment the god light touched its body, the Silver Destroyer seemed to freeze. It stood where it was, unmoving. Its sword hovered in mid swing. With a grin, Hansen drew the six core snake bow, took aim, and fired at the Silver Destroyer. But the Silver Destroyer was moving again before Hansen's arrow even found its target. The creature's small silver sword cut the arrow in half. The godlight restraints don't last for long. We need to cooperate and time our strikes, Lone Bamboo said with a frown. Chapter 2627 Killing a Deified Xenogeneic Lone Bamboo, if you knew it was a deified Xenogeneic with an eight armor talent, why do you not know anything else about it? The creature had just managed to slash Hansen's back with a silver sword light. Hansen's spine was visible through the gaping wound, so it warranted a complaint. Didn't you see the eight words on the gate? That means it has an eight armor talent, Lone Bamboo said as he kept running. It works like that then, does it? Those words describe whatever creature emerges? But surely, someone can't be breeding and growing the xenogeneics in here, right? Hansen pondered aloud as he surveyed the area. He turned his gaze toward the gate with eight words carved into it. The text was from an ancient language of the Geno universe. I don't know. Even the Sky Elders that discovered this place never figured out the White Jay Jing's origin. And so, no one knows where any of these Xenogeneics come from, Lone Bamboo said, as he continued to fight the Fiend and fall back whenever necessary. The two of them fought well together, but the Silver Destroyer was simply too fast. Hansen tried to predict his enemy's movements, but the creature's attacks were so quick that they were unavoidable, so Hansen's predictive abilities were of limited use. Many silver sword lights lit up the skies of White King City like lightning. By the time Hansen saw these sword lights and tried to dodge, it would already be too late. Every time he committed to an attack, he would be unable to dodge. Lone Bamboo wasn't faring much better than Han Senator, he was accumulating wounds, as well. The most depressing thing about this entire situation was the fact that Lone Bamboo's purple godlight, aside from the first time he used it, was unable to land a hit on the Silver Destroyer. The creature moved faster than light itself, and whenever Lone Bamboo fired out some of his killer light, the Silver Destroyer was already gone. None of their Geno Arts could land a strike on the Silver Destroyer, and even the ones that came close were broken by their foe's sword light. Hansen was starting to miss the presence of Little Uncle, especially when the Silver Destroyer's sword light went through his hand. Hansen groaned in pain and mumbled to himself, Little Uncle is good at getting hit. I don't know where he is now but it would be great if he was here. Seeing that he was about to get hit again, he couldn't take it anymore. He summoned his Peacock King Soul Rope. Rainbow substance chains gathered up around to wreathe around the feather garment. Hansen's six-course snake bow fired an arrow bursting with rainbow light. He had aimed it at the incoming sword light. Pang. 
The arrow of rainbow light was destroyed by the silver sword light, and the impact melted half of the silver sword light. The remaining half of the attack continued on toward Hansen, unaffected. With the power buff of the Peacock King's soul robe propelling him forward, Hansen flitted from side to side like some strange bird. With his increased speed, he was able to finally dodge the Silver Destroyer's Silver Sword Light. That is some scary speed. Now that he was using his Peacock King Soul Rope, Hansen was moving at deified velocities. It still wasn't quite enough to put him on par with the Silver Destroyer's rate of attack, though. He had to use his abilities of judgment and movement to successfully evade the Sword Light. That's it. If you keep doing this for a while, I'll find a chance eventually. Lone Bamboo kept trying to shoot the Silver Destroyer with the Purple Eye Godlight. Seriously? You want to keep using me as bait for this monster? Why don't you give it a try? Hansen grumbled, but he still tried his best to lead the Silver Destroyer around. The Silver Destroyer was stronger than any Xenogeneic in the core area. Hansen used his Peacock King Soul Rope and the Six Core Snake Bow to harass his enemy, but he did little to fight the Silver Destroyer directly. The creature was simply too fast for Hansen to hurt it. If he fired an arrow at close range, the creature's sword would effortlessly slash the projectile out of the air. Even the space-traveling arrows with Drillhead were unable to hit his foe. Hansen and Lone Bamboo were double-teaming the Silver Destroyer, yet the monster clearly still had an advantage over them both. Hansen was doing well, though. Now that he had summoned his Peacock King Soul Rope, he was able to block the enemy's sword light. Lone Bamboo's wounds, however, kept increasing. Hansen tried his best to lead the Silver Destroyer around the arena. More than anything, he wanted to stop it from dealing more damage to Lone Bamboo. Although Hansen and Lone Bamboo were working together to take down the Silver Destroyer, their cooperation was far from flawless. Their powers and thought processes were different, and on an instinctual level, they didn't approach the fight in exactly the same manner. Because of this, they missed more than a few chances. Ningyu is very good at helping others coordinate. If he was here to be our commander, it would save us a lot of trouble. It is a shame. When Hansen thought of Ningyu and the state that the man was currently in, it left him shaking his head. As the fight went on, Hansen and Lone Bamboo's cohesion seemed to improve. Although their personalities and powers were different, they were both very talented in the field of combat. They quickly became familiar with each other's strengths and managed to meld their styles. Before long, they were each able to guess what the other's next move was going to be. Their cooperation became more synergetic. Finally, Hansen was able to restrain the Silver Destroyer for a moment, and Lone Bamboo was able to use his Purple God Light on the creature. At that pivotal moment of combat, the light shone across the Silver Destroyer's body. While the Silver Destroyer was incapacitated, Hansen pulled back the Snake Core Snake Bow as far as he could. The arrow of Rainbow Light flew forward, punching into one of the empty eye sockets of the Silver Destroyer. Dong! The sound of metal striking metal rang out. Hansen's arrow exploded from inside the Silver Destroyer's eye. The explosion ripped that chunk of the helmet off, connecting one empty eye socket with the other. The Silver Destroyer behaved as if it didn't feel any pain, and it kept swinging its sword at Han Sr. As Hansen and Lone Bamboo's cooperation became more in sync, they began to land more and more strikes on the Silver Destroyer. After fighting for seven hours, Hansen had managed to unleash 23 arrows. Each one pierced through the Silver Destroyer's helmet. Hansen watched the Silver Destroyer drop to the ground, then he heard the announcement. Deified Xenogeneic hunted. Silver Destroyer. Obtained Deified Gene. No dice. That is fairly unfortunate. Hansen was disappointed that he hadn't received a beast soul. He was going to pick up the Silver Destroyer's body when a beam of light suddenly beat him to it. And then, the Silver Destroyer's body vanished. When that beam of light shut off, a silvery egg appeared in the body's place. Many strange symbols became visible across its surface. Chapter 2628 The Fight That Was Meant To Be As the two of them returned from their fight in White King City, Hansen's heart was unsettled. Both Black King City and White King City gave Hans in the unsettling feeling that he was being watched by some larger entity. But the sky didn't have the power to control the White Jade Jing. If someone really did have authority over that place, that would be truly scary. Hansen and Lone Bamboo had worked together to kill the deified Xenogeneic in White King City. News of their feet spread through Sky Palace like wildfire. The next day, when Hansen decided to go to Black King City, 
he found Exquisite standing on his little jade island. Lady Exquisite, why are you here? Hansen knew this was bad news. It had been so long that their agreement had slipped his mind. He hadn't thought about it when he accepted Lone Bamboo's invitation to visit White King City. Now that everyone knew he had helped kill a deified Xenogeneic, Exquisite thought it would be a fine time to revisit her arrangement with Hans Sr. It was just as Hansen thought. Exquisite eyed him up and down and said, Killing a deified Xenogeneic isn't the work of a crippled man. You seem to be in fine shape, if you ask me. Even though Hansen wanted to object and claim he wasn't healed, he knew Exquisite would no longer believe him. Hansen fell silent, then nodded and said, I'm almost healed. If you are in this much of a rush, give me a time and date. Scheduling something for the future is asking for further delays. How about right now? Exquisite didn't want to wait any longer. She was worried that if they continued to drag this out, she would never be able to claim him. Sure. Where? Hansen asked. He knew this had to come to an end at some point. The battle arena. Exquisite obviously wanted everyone in Sky Palace to attend. Once everyone knew what was going on, it would curtail Hansen's ability to delay proceedings any longer. Sure, Hansen agreed. Then, he went to the arena with Exquisite. Shortly after Hansen and Exquisite arrived, the news of their bout spread quickly. All of Sky Palace heard what was happening, and a short time later, all of the floating islands around the arena were packed with spectators. Everyone already knew why Exquisite had stayed in Sky Palace. When it was reported that Hansen had gone to the arena with Exquisite, it was pretty obvious what was going to happen. Do you guys think Brother Han can defeat Exquisite? Of course he can. Brother Han has an 11 armor talent. Exquisite only has a 9 armor talent. There's more to it than that. The God Spirit touch evolved under Hansen's influence, so there could have been a mistake. We know too little about the way talents are judged. However, Everyone knows of the very high's gene powers. Although Brother Han isn't weak, he has mostly relied on Xenogeneic treasures to achieve what he has this time. He won't be allowed to use treasures. That is bad news for Brother Han. Bullsh asterisk T. Brother Han doesn't need treasure, and he can beat anyone at the same level. Brother Lone Bamboo is here, too. When Han Yin and the Yun sisters heard the news, they all ran to the stadium. Yun Sui was a bit worried about it, and she said, if Brother Han loses, does that mean he will go to the very high immediately? Han Yin shook her head with a serious expression. Don't worry. Big Brother doesn't know how to lose. But what if he does? The people in the very high aren't easy to defeat. Yun Sui was still rather worried. Han Yin looked at Yun Sui, and she couldn't keep herself from sighing. Han Yin could tell Yun Sui fancied her brother. From the time she spent practicing with Yun Chang Kong, she had learned that Yun Sui was a good girl. It's a shame that Big Brother already has Yin Ran, and their relationship is amazing. Han Yin shook her head in dismay. She felt a bit sad for Yun Sui. In the hall, a woman turned to Sky Palace leader. If Hansen loses, are you going to let him go to the very high? If he loses, of course he will go, Sky Palace leader said coldly. Leader, I think you should know how important Hansen is for the prosperity of Sky Palace, the woman said with a frown. That is why the Very High want him so badly. Do you think that the Very High's old man would allow Exquisite to give up a lone bamboo so easily? Sky Palace leader smiled. If the Very High know that Hansen can bless people, isn't that even worse for us? Our plan will become even more difficult to complete, the woman said. Upon hearing that, Sky Palace leader frowned. A while later he said, the first seed has been in the big silence system for a long time. We don't know what happened to him. We don't know when he'll be back, but without him, I don't believe if this can continue. I have sent a group of people to the Big Silence system, but in a place like Big Silence, it can be practically impossible to find a single person. Out of every hundred people that go there, it is likely only one will return. The woman sighed. Wait a bit longer. If this really doesn't work, then we'll have to put pressure on you, Shanshin, Sky Palace leader said. The woman nodded and didn't say anything further. Sky Palace leader's gaze was fixed to the arena. He didn't say anything, but he was thinking to himself, maybe he's a good choice. Although he won't stand much of a chance, it is better than putting all my eggs in one basket. In the arena, Hansen looked at Exquisite. Exquisite said emotionlessly, per the terms of our agreement, you will not use Xenogeneic treasures. You can only use your body and Geno arts to fight. If you win, 
I will leave and never allow the very high to pester you again. If I lose, I will follow you to the very high. I will listen to your orders, Hansen said quickly. Good. Exquisite nodded. Her expression was chilling. Her third eye slowly opened to reveal the Tai Chi Yin Yang eye. She has just come on stage, and she's already using her very high eye. It looks like Exquisite is taking Brother Han seriously. It is rare to see the very high in a fight, especially when they are still kings. And even more so to watch them use their very high eye. That just proves Exquisite is desperate to get Hans and to join the very high. If it was me, I would have just followed her and done whatever she said. Your development would benefit so much with the very high, and you'd be surrounded by beautiful women. Why wouldn't he want to go? I wonder what goes on in Lone Bamboo and Hansen's minds. That's why you're just a bottom of the barrel student. Hansen and Lone Bamboo are geniuses. Hansen looked at his enemy gravely. They were both ninth tier kings. Hansen wasn't afraid of any creature, but Exquisite was from the very high. She had countless geno arts and secret skills in her pocket, so he had to be very careful. The moment she opened her very high eye, Exquisite became that robotic person again. She just stood there, not saying anything or even glancing around. Raw power suddenly rushed down into the arena. The whole place was twisted by some strange energy. Is that her real power? Hansen squinted slightly. He saw the space around the woman continue to thrash and twist. Although Exquisite was right in front of him, he could barely see her now. Chapter 2629 The World Moves Because of Her As Exquisite stood in the arena, she looked more like a piece of machinery than a living being. Her expression was utterly placid, as if she could see through everything. Even sages and prophets wouldn't be so calm and controlled. No matter how many times I see this, I'm always struck by both the power and the cruelty of the very high eye. They have managed to combine the sky with their body. They should be the real sky people. But combining with the sky makes them a part of the universal rule set. Does the real exquisite still exist? Sky Palace leader looked at Exquisite and sighed. Our Alpha worried about that, too. That was why he insisted on interbreeding with another race to create an entirely new people It brought about very special changes for the very high eye. Our very high eyes might have weakened now that they are no longer perfectly aligned with the universal rule set, but the changes did open the door for other, grander opportunities. It has more possibilities than the very high eye. The woman paused and went on to say, but anyway, we are part of the universe. There is no way for us to disconnect from it, no matter what we do. From that perspective, the path of the very high is the correct one. They're the race that is closest to the weave that composes the universe. Right or wrong, it doesn't matter. We should just take the path we feel is right. Results are something only time can tell us, Sky Palace leader said with a shrug. Hansen was admiring Exquisite's power. He watched her use this ability once before, but seeing it again was just as moving. People weren't perfect. Everyone had their flaws. When Exquisite opened her very high eye, however, she no longer seemed like a mortal being with failings and frailties. It was as if she wasn't even a person. She was like some art piece created by none other than God himself. Use all your strength, or else you won't stand a chance, Exquisite told Hans Senator her words might have sounded cocky, but there was no cockiness in her tone. It was more like she was just speaking facts. Hansen smiled. He lifted his hand like a knife and used Fong to slash toward her. The last time they fought, they had been using the water of a nearby pond. It was like a practice session for him, and Exquisite hadn't used all her very high power. This time, it was different. She wasn't holding back. Exquisite's battling power was firing on all cylinders. Purple knife hair flew out of his palm like the fangs of a toxic snake that was leaping forward to bite her. It was a quick, cruel, and accurate slash. The strike was almost too fast to track. Isha saw Hansen use Fong, and she couldn't help but nod. Hansen's teeth knife was different from her own, but it had already reached the skill ceiling. This display of his had asserted his position as one of the greatest teeth knife elites. Sky Palace had many elites that made use of knives, and when they saw Hansen's attack, they were surprised. Even people who didn't know about knives could tell how strong that attack was. It had reached an unbelievable level. It was no worse than the skill of a deified elite. Although I don't want to admit it, talent really does determine how far a person can go. Like Brother Han, for example. He can perform a knife skill as impressive as that. In Sky Palace, 
I am afraid only lone bamboo and you Shanshin can be compared to him, a Sky Palace student said with a sigh. The next second, that same Sky Palace student felt his eyes widen. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. Hansen's shocking strike had missed. As the attack flew forward, Exquisite stood where she was and didn't move. Hansen's attack just flashed right through her, and it didn't even ruffle her hair. Exquisite's white clothes didn't even flutter in the wind as she calmly looked at Hansen and said, Continue. Use all your power. Hansen didn't move. Then he summoned his power and began to use all of his skills from Teeth Knife. To be honest, Hansen never really focused on knife skills, but he had tried very hard to practice them. All of his skills had become very powerful, and not many people at his level were so skilled. But over the next few minutes, he used every Teeth Knife derived skill that he knew. And that entire time, Exquisite stood where she was. She was unmoving. She didn't even wiggle her toes. Hansen's knife airs flew past her harmlessly. The Sky Palace students knew the very high were strong, but they were still frozen. They couldn't imagine what sort of skill was being used against Han Senator Exquisite had somehow made her opponent miss every strike without moving a finger. She hadn't been damaged in the least. No one would think that Han Sen would make the mistake of missing his opponent, but even if he did, there was no way that all of his knife skills would fail to touch her. Brother Lone Bamboo, what power is Exquisite using? How can she avoid taking any damage when she's just standing there? Yun Sui asked Lone Bamboo, who was beside her. Lone Bamboo waited for a while before saying, she might not have moved, but in a way, she's still hiding. What is the difference? Yun Suzhang couldn't help herself from asking. Lone Bamboo thought for a minute and then said, we know that movement is relative. When you're flying a ship and you look out the window, it might look like the things outside are going backward instead of the ship going forward. Yun Suzhang heard this, and with a trembling body, she said, Do you mean Exquisite isn't the one moving, but it is actually the whole world? Something like that. Since she is only a ninth tier king, her ability isn't that powerful yet. But the arena is shifting because of her, at least. Lone Bamboo nodded. The whole world is being altered by her. That must mean that Brother Han is going to lose, Yun Sui said with worry. Maybe not. I was just explaining what she's doing. Exquisite is still only a king-class fighter. She isn't as strong as a deified creature. There is a limit to how much she can influence the world. If Hansen goes beyond that limit, he can be the train that stops moving in a scene, Lone Bamboo said. They are both ninth-tier kings? Can Brother Han's power exceed what Exquisite's strength can control? Yun Sui looked at Lone Bamboo, expecting an answer. Yes, Lone Bamboo answered with certainty. After Lone Bamboo said yes, Hansen cast Fong again, repeating that same Gino art. There's no point in using it twice, Exquisite still stood where she had started. But as she said that, she suddenly stopped and looked down. Huh? The arena echoed with the sound of clothing being torn. Exquisite's left sleeve had been ripped off. Purple teeth power spread across her garment. You said using the same skill wouldn't work? Hansen smiled at Exquisite as he spoke. Chapter 2630 Practicing at that moment, the Sky Palace students felt as if giant boulders had been lifted from their shoulders. They breathed deep sighs of relief. Hansen was the best in the Sky Palace, but Exquisite faced him calmly. For some time, Hansen hadn't been able to harm a single hair on her head. The woman had stood against his attacks, as steady as a mountain. Seeing Hansen's attacks fail had crushed the Sky Palace students and prevented them from breathing. It made them think Exquisite was a god that couldn't be beaten. But then, Han Sen's knife was able to cut Exquisite's clothing. Seeing that small victory calmed the anxious audience. Continue, Exquisite said. She waved her sleeves, and the teeth power was extinguished like someone had tossed a bucket of water over a campfire. Hansen waved his hand again, using Fong to attack Exquisite. This time, he used even more power and speed. Exquisite finally moved, but she only took half a step. That was enough for Han Sen's Fong to go wide and miss her. Even so, it didn't look as if she was going to fight back. Hansen pushed himself to release even more power, making the next move a few times stronger than the last. He used his teeth knife once again. Exquisite's feet moved gracefully, lightly sliding her to the side and letting her dodge every teeth knife attack Hansen launched. Hansen's teeth knife was unable to touch Exquisite's clothes a second time. Although Hansen's speed can break through the effect that Exquisite is casting on the arena, he cannot catch up to her. 
This isn't a good situation for Hansen to be in. Hansen needs to overcome both the skill she is using and her own innate speed, Thousand Feather Crane said, as he understood Hansen's situation. Very high powers are so scary. It's like they're cheating. The whole universe is helping her, Insui said with depression. Of course. Otherwise, the very high wouldn't have become the best race, would they? Even born deified ancient gods envy their power, Lone Bamboo said. As this was going on, Sky Palace leader observed Hansen with great interest. He smiled and said, The very high are known for their strength. To fight against the very high is to fight against the whole universe, in a sense. Although Exquisite's level is low, and she cannot change the universe much, any of her other peers would be at a severe disadvantage against her. Unless you are one or two tiers higher than the very high, it is difficult to fight them. How Hansen seeks to deal with this will be interesting. You think Hansen actually stands a chance in this fight? The woman asked in shock. She turned to the Sky Palace leader with a quizzical expression on her face. I thought you always liked him, too, Sky Palace leader said. I liked him because of his powers of blessing and the deified weapons he wields. His talent isn't bad. It's probably better than those of anyone else on his level, but his skill alone won't be enough to deal with the very high. I'm not saying that Hansen is weak. It's just that the very high are too strong, the woman said. And yet, maybe this will work out for Hansen anyway, the Sky Palace leader said thoughtfully as he watched Hans Sr. Hansen cast another strike with teeth knife. Then, he stopped attacking. What other Geno arts do you have? Use them, Exquisite commanded. She still wanted to see more of Hansen's powers, so she didn't attack yet. As the Sky Palace students watched Exquisite, it was as if they were looking at a Valkyrie that couldn't be defeated. Once again, she had become untouchable. Hansen wasn't intimidated, though. He had seen Exquisite slave away as a maid to the crocodile gods, so he couldn't think of her as some unbeatable creature. Plus, Exquisite's power didn't seem entirely unbreakable to Hans Sr. Many Sky Palace students froze as they looked at Hans Senator if they were in his shoes, they knew how desperate they would feel. They wouldn't even be able to ruffle Exquisite's clothes. They just wanted to know if Hansen had a sufficient amount of power to break Exquisite. If he was unable to break her, and Exquisite unleashed a strike, she would only need that one skill to beat Hans Senator after all, the universe was strengthening her might. It was hard to imagine how crippling that strike might be. Hansen swung his hands and spoke to Exquisite. I finished warming up. Now we begin. Holy SH asterisk T. Warming up? That was just him stretching? Brother Han. This bluffing of yours is a bit too much. Haha. Uh -huh. Brother Han is Brother Han. His bluffing is so fresh. Hansen had been using power that only the best ninth tier kings could match. There was no way that he had been holding back the majority of his strength. But even so, the Sky Palace students began to grow a little excited again. When they looked at Exquisite, she no longer seemed quite as untouchable as she had before. When Exquisite had first turned on her very high eye, her emotions seemed to disappear. She had seemed perfectly calm since then, but now she frowned. This guy's poker face is too good. The Sky Palace leader wanted to laugh. He's just like you when you were young, the woman said. When I was young, I was really strong. I didn't pretend like he is. The Sky Palace leader immediately corrected her. The woman rolled her eyes at him. She didn't say anything further, but scorn seemed to drip off of her. The Sky Palace leader was very smart, and he stopped talking. After all, that woman knew everything about his past. Since we're done practicing, let us begin, Exquisite said very calmly. She had only shown her emotions for the tiniest moment, and what Hansen said didn't affect her much. Very High's forget love was no joke. Exquisite's level with it was low, but a deified Very High could watch her husband and children be humiliated and killed in front of her without feeling a single thing. Then you must look closely. Hansen slowly raised his right hand. He clenched his fingers together to make a fist. Everyone could see Hansen preparing to unleash a punch, but he suddenly stopped. Have you heard the old saying? What saying? Exquisite asked. I am the greatest of my league, Hansen said. He said each word slowly. No, Exquisite knew what Hansen meant, but her expression never wavered. Action spoke a lot louder than words. When the Sky Palace students heard him, they thought this was too much. But judging from Hansen's situation, it wasn't too much. Then you should learn it now. Hansen swung his fist. Bz's T. Hansen's body tore through the fabric of space, 
disappearing from everyone's vision. When he appeared again, he punched Exquisite square in the face. Exquisite's nose fountain blood as her body was sent soaring away. She crashed into the ceiling of the arena with such force that even the protective shielding shimmered. As this happened, all of Sky Palace fell silent. The students were so silent that they could have heard a rat fart. Chapter 2631 Random Punch I am the greatest of my level. Suddenly, everyone felt very differently about the words that Hansen had just spoken. Exquisite's body hit the ground with a thump. When she rose to her feet, she did so like a shambling zombie. Her bloody face and broken nose had instantly returned to normal. She was as pretty as she had been before Han Sen's punch, and it didn't look as if she had sustained any injuries. What kind of Geno art is that? Exquisite asked Han Sr. Han Sen had been able to increase his speed until he was faster than the manipulated universe. He had moved too quickly for her to even react. That wasn't something a ninth year king should have been able to achieve. Only a handful of half deifieds could reach such a speed. Exquisite knew a few people who could accomplish this, but Hansen wasn't on that short list. The ones she knew were all half deified. Yushachin of Sky Palace was one such individual. He could move that quickly, but he used his sky eye in the extreme evil path. Hansen was just a crystallizer that couldn't use a sky eye. That wasn't a geno art. It was just a simple punch. Hansen smiled. Son of AB asterisk TCH. I am now buying into Han Sen's bluffing. Ha ha. A random punch. Well said, Brother Han. This very high is actually quite lame. She couldn't even withstand one of Brother Han's punches. Many of the students at Sky Palace were excited. None of them liked Exquisite much. They were all happy to insult her. Yun Sui couldn't help but smile. What is wrong with Brother Han? Is he not capable of behaving humbly? He has done what he should have. I never liked these very high, anyway. Yin Su Hang said. Lone Bamboo didn't say anything. He merely smiled. The audience thought Hansen was just trying to make Exquisite mad, but he knew Hansen was speaking the truth. It really was just a simple punch. Lone Bamboo had fought against Hansen once before. Hansen really was that fast. His fitness was so high, it would be difficult to find a half deified that could equal him. Lone Bamboo had become one with the Purple Eye Butterfly which was how his own fitness had increased to unbelievable levels. But if he was compared to Han Sen, he still fell far short. For if Han Sen's Geno Arts had reached the ninth tier, his fitness had been reinforced four times. Ordinary ninth tier kings simply couldn't compete. Even if Han Sen didn't use his super god spirit body, his fitness was still better than others of the same level. By a wide margin, too. Against other kings, Han Sen really did reign supreme. His talk about being the best of his league wasn't some baseless boast. After all, there were no other creatures that could experience the reinforcement of four Geno arts the way Hansen had. In addition, the Geno arts he had focused on were amongst the best ever. With the fitness he wielded, he was still a bit weak against deified creatures, but kings and half deifieds were no longer a serious threat. That was a simple punch? Then let me see how many simple punches you can throw. Although Exquisite was using her very high eye, she couldn't help but look a little angry. Exquisite lifted her right arm and used the edge of her hand like a knife. With it, she tried slashing toward Han's senator. Everyone immediately realized that she was using Han Sen's own skill. This was Fong. The students of Sky Palace were in shock. Teeth knife wasn't an insanely good skill, but it was the rebate secret Geno art. Practicing it required the body of a rebate. It was remarkable that Hansen was able to use it, but after all, he was Isha's only student. Somehow, Exquisite was able to use Teeth Knife, too. When she used it, the purple teeth air shredded space. She was wielding the skill with more power than Hansen's usage had possessed. Exquisite had been in Sky Palace for a year. She hadn't been lazy during that time. Teeth Knife wasn't a secret to the very high, and she had spent time practicing it to achieve a very high proficiency with it. When Exquisite used her very high eye, the entire universe would work to help her. Her knife find wasn't as good as Han Sen's, but the power in her strikes was above the teeth knife Han Sen had used earlier. Han Sen saw the tearing space power coming toward him. The knife air was like the real, raging purple air of a dragon's maw. Still, his expression didn't change. Running the story of genes at maximum, he used his own body to throw a punch toward the purple knife air. As everyone gaped in astonishment, Hansen's punch broke the knife air that was raging toward him. His counterattack didn't stop there, though. 
It flew all the way back to Exquisite and pounded her knife hand. Catcha. The sound of breaking bones crunched audibly throughout the arena. The thin bones in Exquisite's hand were shattered by Han Sin's fist. His punch was still unstoppable, and it continued toward Exquisite's chest. Exquisite's face had turned white, but she was able to react instantly. She used God's wonder to disappear from in front of Hans Sr. But Hansen was waiting for her to appear again. When she reappeared, Hansen's fist was still heading straight toward her. Everyone's mouths opened wide. They couldn't believe their eyes. Even Sky Palace leader looked stunned. After a while, he said, not bad. He's as good as I was when I was younger. He's much stronger than you when you were young, the woman said. She didn't feel bad about the critique. When I was young, I was stronger than a tiger. I was crueler than a wolf, Sky Palace leader tried to explain. Before he was finished, the woman cut him off. Could you bully a student of the very high like this when you were younger? Um, I did beat them, Sky Palace leader coughed. There is a big difference between beating and bullying, the woman said with a roll of her eyes. Hansen was playing with Exquisite like a cat with a mouse. In front of that absolute power and speed, Exquisite, who had previously looked like some sort of god, was being used as a punching bag. Her bones were breaking one by one, and she couldn't maintain her regal appearance. Exquisite used all kinds of Geno arts as she tried to fight back, but her efforts were wasted. Hansen's speed and power completely suppressed her. She couldn't dodge. She couldn't counterattack. Aside from getting pummeled, there was nothing she could do. Hansen was like an enraged Tyrannosaurus Rex right now. He ignored Exquisite's attacks and allowed her powers to come down on him. Her attacks made slight marks on Spell's armor, but they disappeared quickly after. Every one of Han Sin's punches hit Exquisite, though. Every bone in her body broke under the onslaught. Blood gushed out of her mouth uncontrollably. If she had been fighting someone ordinary, she could have used God's wonder to protect her body. Things would have gone much better for her. But Han Sin's alter ego had already learned God's wonder. Each time she disappeared, he just needed to calculate and predict where Exquisite was going to pop back into reality. Plus, the arena was quite small. There wasn't much room for her to teleport around. Hansen could easily determine where she was going to show up next. Ping. Exquisite's body hit the dome of the arena again, and the shield flickered and shimmered under the impact. When she landed on the ground in a heap, Exquisite remained where she was and didn't try to get back up again. She looked at Hansen with astonishment. She couldn't believe it. Her very high eye was active, but she was completely suppressed by another of the same level. Try as she might, she couldn't fight back. Chapter 2632 The Power to Conquer a King I am the greatest in my league. Exquisite lay on the ground. She stared at Hansen and didn't try to move. She thought about what Hansen had told her, and complex emotions washed over her. Brother Han is. He's too strong. Even Exquisite is trash before Father Han. What kind of very high is she? So scary. The siblings of the Han family are monsters. This is too cruel. He even bullied the crap out of a very high student. Those punches were way too awesome. I never liked the very high, and they wanted to take Brother Han and Brother Lone Bamboo to be their slaves. And see? They don't even have what it takes. The blood of the Sky Palace students was boiling. The very high always acted as if the sky were inferior to them. Right now, as they watched Hansen destroy Exquisite, they were filled with glee. They all wished they could batter the very high in the same way Hansen could. Can this fight in now? Hansen turned back to Exquisite, who was still sitting on the ground at the edge of the arena. She was staring right at him. Exquisite seemed to have been startled from a deep slumber. As she stared at Hansen, resolve settled into her eyes. No, it isn't over yet. The universe is still on my side. I won't lose, especially not to you. Exquisite slowly stood up. Her hair rose and waved in the air, despite the absence of wind. Her tight chi eyes spun dangerously, and the black and white colors glowed. Her aura began to spread ominously, forming black and white airs out of her body. They began to spin together, forming the structure of a substance chain. She's forcing her nine tears to become one. She is becoming half deified right now. The realization rolled through the arena like a thunderclap. BZ's T. As everyone reeled from the shock, Exquisite's black and white air exploded. Black Geno armor appeared and encased her whole body. Her face was shielded, too. Only her very high eye could be seen. As this happened, 
Her very high eye turned pure white. It was like a small nuclear reactor, and a scary power was emerging. At this same moment, Exquisite's presence was being pushed to a level that others couldn't imagine. She was like a scary monster queen, and she used her third eye to look icily at Han Sr. Exquisite turned to Han Sin and raised her hand. She made a pulling motion. She didn't seem to release any power, but the whole of space shifted. It was as if the space between the two fighters had been severely reduced. Instantly, Han Sin's body was pulled directly in front of Exquisite's hands. Exquisite grabbed him by the neck. No one can beat me in my universe. Exquisite used the white flame in her third eye to look at Hansen while she spoke. After that, Exquisite grabbed Hansen by the neck. Her body began to generate a frightening black and white power. It felt as if all the power in the universe was draining into her hands. If she even twitched, she would surely break Hansen's neck. Now I will give you the chance to concede, Exquisitely said to Hansen as she looked at him. Her face looked like it had been carved from marble. Her voice was a dead monotone, like the grinding of a machine. It was as if she would be happy to turn Han Sen's body to dust if he failed to agree. I still prefer it when you smile. This look doesn't suit you, Hansen said, frowning slightly at Exquisite. I'm telling you to concede. Exquisite thundered. Her black and white air rose madly like two ravenous demons. It was like they were going to ravage Han Sen's body and consume him. Not even a single bone would be left behind. No one can force me to do something I don't think is right, Hansen replied. Exquisite looked at Hansen and didn't speak. Her face remained entirely expressionless. The black and white powers in the air became stronger. It looked as if they were on the verge of exploding any second. The Sky Palace students looked at Hansen with worry. Yun Sui fidgeted nervously with the hem of her dress. Her nails almost shredded her garments, and she was starting to sweat. Should we... The woman looked at Sky Palace Leader. Sky Palace Leader shook his head. Wait a bit longer. As he watched Exquisite Rage, Hansen wasn't mad. He just felt sorry for her. She had given up her emotions so she could become one with the universe. To put it nicely, it was like the sky and humans had combined. To be frank, though, it was more like she had become a pawn of the universe. She had thrown away her identity to become a high-class creature. Hansen had seen people experience similar changes before in Sky Palace, but that had been very different from what he was seeing now. When the sky became one with the sky, they focused a lot more on their emotions. It wasn't like the Very High, who only cared about being one with the universe. If the Very High ever became 100% united with the universe, would they still count as individual people? Hansen shook his head. There were many things he was unsure of, but he knew for certain that he never wanted that future. He couldn't take this path. Exquisite stood in front of him, and her power raged higher and higher. Hansen laid his hand against the fist that Exquisite was using to squeeze his neck. She lost her grip on Hansen's throat. The white light in Exquisite's eyes spilled over. Her black and white airs erupted like a volcano. Her other hand flew toward Hansen like a bullet. Her black and white air was generating a substance chain on that fist. That fist was so strong that every face in Sky Palace changed. Yoon Sui was so nervous that it felt like her heart was going to leap out of her chest at any moment. The two fighters were at very close range, and the power that Exquisite wielded was frightening. If Hansen got punched, his body would be destroyed. The next second, however, the crowd noticed that Hansen's hands were moving as well. He grabbed Exquisite's fist, and then, both of her hands fell under Hansen's control. That scary black and white air began to shred Hansen's hands. Deep grooves were torn into Hansen's spell armor. Blood came gushing out from the lacerations. The scary black and white air stormed through the arena. Hansen was at the center of the storm, with his armor taking the brunt of it. Wounds kept appearing across his body. Didn't I tell you? Against another of the same level, I am king. The only things that can fall to a king are smiles and a woman's beauty. Using force against me just won't do, Hansen said. Then, he tightened his fist with new strength. He threw Exquisite's black and white air-surrounded body away. Hansen moved with the arc of her toss. He swung his fist like a hurricane. Beneath the force of Hansen's blows, the black and white air was waning. Hansen's punches pummeled Exquisite's black armor. Ping! Ping! The collision of fists against armor produced sharp, striking noises. They were so fast. There was hardly a break between each sound. Chapter 2633, Your Smile is Eternal
How, how could this? Exquisite's face was etched with disbelief. She felt as if her connection with the universe was being severed. Under Han Sen's fists, her will, and the power that bound her to the universe was being taken away. Her oneness with the world was becoming blurred and difficult to grasp. She felt as if she was returning to her former self before she started to practice all this. The terror of the unknown and all kinds of bad emotions were slowly seeping into her. It made her feel fear and restlessness and despair and pain. All this and many more emotions she had never felt before were starting to overwhelm her. How? Why? I am already half deified. Why am I still losing? Why? The physical pain she was enduring was a pittance compared to the mental pain she was suffering. These emotions that she had never felt before were all inside her, mixing her up. They were ruining her ability to think. As she watched the shadows of the raging fists delivered by the man before her, she had never felt so weak before. She felt small, weak, and helpless. It was as if the universe and everything inside it had abandoned her. It made her far more frightened than the damage she would incur physically. So, what? Even if the whole universe is on your side, if you can't smile, it is meaningless. Owning the universe is pointless if there is no happiness. Only your smile is eternal, said Han Sin's voice next to her ear. And then came his final punch. It struck her in the stomach. It was a nasty punch, and her whole body rose under the force of the impact. Pang. Exquisite was in the air. The black Gino armor she wore shattered like frail glass, becoming a collection of shards dancing in the air. Her black and white air fizzed into smoke. Exquisite's body rolled between the shattered pieces of armor. Blood poured came out of her mouth like rain, soaking the arena. The light of her very high eye had been extinguished. Her ordinary eyes had been closed, but now they were open again. And they were black. Those eyes didn't possess a strong will. They didn't look emotionless and cold as they once had. They looked helpless. They looked lonely. They looked confused. There was a whole bevy of different emotions swirling within them. Voila! Shattered bits of armor bounced across the floor of the arena, and Exquisite's body fell into Han Sen's arms. Hopefully, the next time I see you, I can see that smile. Han Sen's face was blurry above Exquisite. When she heard what he said, she passed out. Sky Palace fell silent. A very high half deified, who should have been invincible to anyone who wasn't fully deified, had been beaten. Han Sen had used his fist to obliterate her self-gene armor. It was difficult for the sky to wrap their minds around. Hansen picked up the heavily injured exquisite and carried her out of the arena. The Sky Palace students that had been watching finally woke up from their days. Against another of the same level, I am king. I can't believe Brother Han could actually do it. What do you mean he could actually do it? He has already done it. The very high claimed themselves as the strongest in the universe, and a half deified has just been destroyed by Hansen who is just a ninth-tier king. That is scary to think about. With a fitness level like that, he is scarier than the strongest of the dragons. You won't be able to find anyone with a fitness level higher than Han Sen's. Don't forget, this is Godfather Han. He can bless others and make them deified. He must be able to bless himself as well. Throughout Sky Palace, everyone was talking about this. The most commonly repeated phrase was against another of the same level, I am king. Even a long time after, Sky Palace students fervently discussed the events. Although the leaders of Sky Palace issued a stern warning to students not to leak this news to the outside, Sky Palace didn't have steel walls. Despite their attempts to suppress the story, news of Han Sen's victory leaked. But most of the elites that heard about this fight didn't care. No one believed that a crystallizer king could manage to fight a half deified very high and emerge victorious. Most of the nobles that heard about this thought that it was just a fabricated tale. Only the Sky Palace students who had witnessed the fight understood just how scary Han Sen's fitness was. A Buddha deified heard about this incident, and his response became famous across the universe. You're the best too, Han Sen? That deified Buddha said this to mock Han Senator, he thought people were making up outlandish stories that were far too ridiculous to believe. And then, for a long time, you're the best too, Han Sen became a quip that was used against anyone being hilariously boastful. The phrase really caught on, and it was used everywhere. People mocked Hansen shamelessly, and many didn't even know that the phrase had come from the Buddha. What a scary fitness level. How did he do that? 
How can a crystallizer have a body with that much raw power? The woman said with shock. She never expected the fight would turn out this way. It must be related to the Gino art he has practiced. His Gino art was something Isha asked me to take a look at. She wanted me to help her modify it. That Gino art is nearly impossible to learn, though. When I looked at it, I didn't think any creature could practice it. Even deified fighters wouldn't have a body strong enough for it. In the beginning, I thought it was a prank. But I think now that Hansen really has learned it. And that might mean he will become someone incredibly powerful. It is rather surprising. After pausing, Sky Palace leader shook his head. It's a shame Hansen doesn't even know how he learned it. Otherwise, if he was able to share the secrets of this Gino art, making a strong race wouldn't be too difficult. Is there no way to modify the Gino art? The woman's heart jumped as she asked. I researched it before. It is impossible to modify. Plus, the Gino art belongs to Han Senator without his permission. We can't freely distribute it. That is a promise I made to Isha, Sky Palace leader said. That is a shame, the woman said, her voice full of regret. Come on. We need to go kiss that kid's asterisk SS. And we need to comfort Exquisite to make sure that we haven't just started a war, Sky Palace leader said. After the woman left, Sky Palace leader picked up a paper and pen. He wrote down Hansen, and then, after looking at it for a while, he drew two circles next to the name. He then placed a question mark beside them. He looked at the name and then proceeded to write for a while. Sky Palace leader spoke to himself as he did, saying, maybe he really is a suitable candidate. No matter what the outside world said, after that fight, Hansen's position in Sky Palace was elevated to even loftier heights. Although he didn't have sky blood in his veins, they essentially treated him as if he was one of their own. Every time Hansen went to teach Gino arts, his lecture hall would be packed to the gills. Many pure blood sky students would come and listen to him teach Gino arts. Many kings and even half deifieds came to listen to any lecture that he gave. Exquisite self gene armor had been broken, and it would take a long time for her to heal. Hansen thought he might end up in trouble. But Thousand Feather Crane told him that Exquisite wasn't planning on coming after him. She hadn't mentioned what had happened to the very high. Owning the universe is pointless if there is no happiness. Only your smile is eternal. Hopefully, the next time I see you, I will see you smile. Exquisite sat in front of a window. She looked at the clouds, frozen in thought. She kept thinking about what Hansen had said to her. Chapter 2634 Hansen's Trouble after a year spent in recovery, Hansen was now almost as healthy as he had been before the Medusa's shield sucked him dry. But rather than making his life easier, recovering from his injuries actually brought him new difficulties. Before, while his body was known to be damaged, no one had made any demands of him. Now that he was well again, all kinds of people tried to flex their authority or exploit their relationship with Hansen to ask him to bless their children. Some of these people were easy for Hansen to turn down whereas others were more difficult. Like in Cha Kong and the sixth elder that looked after the rebate. There were others who had no direct connection to Hansen, but they were deifieds and high-ranking officers of Sky Palace. If Hansen rejected them all, he would offend everyone in Sky Palace. But if he accepted their requests, he would be pestered constantly and he would never get a moment's rest. Brother Han, how's it going? Hansen was coming out of the seventh tower when more trouble found him. He raised his head when he heard the voice calling for him. It was Yu Jing. He was riding a king-class Xenogeneic mount. It looked as if the man was doing all right for himself. I'm doing okay. You haven't come to me to request a blessing, right? Yu Jing always had a purpose for visiting Han Senator at heart. Yu Jing was an evil businessman. Running into him was never a coincidence. When Yu Jing heard Hansen say that, he laughed. You must be really annoyed by the people who've been pestering you lately but you won't have to suffer it for much longer. In fact, I have a proposal that can return some peace to your life. Oh, and what would that be? Hansen looked at Yu Jing with confusion. He didn't believe Yu Jing would have come all this way just to solve Hansen's problem for him. The man wasn't that nice. Yu Jing looked serious when he said, the people of Sky Palace are coming to you privately because there is no official way for them to seek your blessings. If you create an official channel, perhaps set up an auction where people can bid for a blessing or two, then they'll stop coming to see you privately. You could earn a lot of money and remove some stress from your life at the same time. When Hansen heard this suggestion, he knew Yu Jing was up to something. The idea was stupid. 
Rather than fixing Hans Sint's problem, it would only be more of a pain in the asterisk SS for him. Having an auction would allow him to make a lot of money, but it wouldn't stop the authority figures of Sky Palace from contacting Hansen personally. If he refused to give blessings outside of the auction, people would just think Hansen was a greedy person. If he merely sold his blessings without helping the leadership of Sky Palace directly, people might end up hating him. That told Hansen the idea for an auction probably wouldn't work. If he altered this method slightly, though, he could allow Sky Palace leader to determine how his blessing talent was used. The leader would determine who received the blessings, which would take pressure off of Hans Sr. If the Sky Palace deifieds wanted a slot, they would pester Sky Palace leader instead of Hans Sr. Of course, Hansen couldn't use all his power on blessing others. He would have to keep telling the lie that giving out blessings affected his lifespan and strength. He could say that it took two or three years for the negative side effects of a blessing to dissipate. That way, he would only have to bless on rare occasions. Hansen could also claim that Sky Palace leader completely controlled how the blessings were distributed. If someone came to Hansen privately, he could say Sky Palace leader forbade him from giving out blessings outside of the official channel. If Hansen offered Sky Palace leader such a valuable opportunity, there was no way that the man could refuse. It would be a disservice to his people if he let this chance go by. Thinking of this, Hansen came up with a plan, and his depression evaporated. I don't want to hold an auction. Giving a blessing severely damages my body. I have no interest in blessing others unless it is absolutely necessary. Earning additional resources isn't a good enough reason, Hansen told Yu Jing. That is a crying shame, Yu Jing mumbled, heartbroken. Brother Yu Jing, did you just come here to tell me that? Hansen asked Yu Jing, raising an eyebrow. Not really. I'm here because someone asked me to conduct trade with you, Yu Jing quickly said. It won't be something that has to do with blessings, right? Hansen asked, suddenly alert. Yu Jing laughed and said, Of course not. A half deified relative of mine wants to ask you to kill a Xenogeneic with him. There hasn't been a chance for him to talk to you face to face, however. So he asked me to make the request in his stead. Killing a Xenogeneic? Why would he ask me? There are many elites here. If he needed someone, why would he come to me? Hansen was shocked. He couldn't believe some Sky Palace half deified wanted his help just to kill a Xenogeneic. My relative is a bit special. He can't ask the deifieds for help, and he wants to hunt a deified Xenogeneic. He heard that you and Lone Bamboo managed to bring down a Xenogeneic, and that is why he wanted you to help him. There is plenty of room for negotiation. My relative is very rich. Yu Jing explained. This half deified person was called Yu Kuen. He was one of the more experienced half deifieds in Sky Palace. He was from the same generation as Sky Palace leader, and he was known to be quite talented. He had a chance to become deified long ago, but something happened in his family that had kept him from doing so. He still wasn't deified. What was so important that he put his ascension on the back burner? Hansen asked. Hansen wasn't just asking this out of curiosity. He was worried that this could end up dragging him into some internal conflict within Sky Palace. Hansen was very careful to avoid involving himself in such things. Yu Jing understood Han's senator. He smiled and explained, Don't worry, Brother Han. No one in Sky Palace has a grudge against Uncle Yu Kuen. He hasn't become deified because of something that happened to his son. His son got involved with the wrong people and accidentally leaked classified information and screwed up some of Sky Palace's plans. Although this had nothing to do with Uncle Yukuin, he went to jail for 30 years on his son's behalf. He was released a few years ago. One of our deifieds would help Uncle Yukuin if he asked. According to the rules of Sky Palace, he has every right to request aid. But Yukuin is very ashamed about what his son did to the people of Sky Palace, so he doesn't want to ask any of the deifieds for help. That is why he wants to work with you. You don't have to worry that he won't be able to pay you. He is old and has a lot of money. Let me consider this for a while, Hansen answered, carefully not agreeing. Yukuin's situation was complex, so Hansen wanted to consider the potential ramifications for working with the man. Okay, give me a response as soon as you can. Uncle Yukuin is waiting, and I want to give him an answer, Yu Jing said. Hansen agreed. After saying goodbye to Yu Jing, he left his own little island and headed to the primary island where Sky Palace leader lived. Chapter 2635 difficult decision. You don't want to offend people, so you want me to do it for you? You are quite smart, 
Sky Palace leader said to Hansen with a smile. Hansen hadn't explained his true purpose, but Sky Palace leader immediately recognized what he was doing. Sky Palace leader is so smart. I want to do everything I can for Sky Palace, but sadly, my body is unable to keep up. I cannot bless a student every day. Hansen feigned complete sincerity. He looked as if he wanted nothing more than to serve Sky Palace leader. Fine, I'll be the bad guy, but in return, you will have to do something for me, Sky Palace leader said to Hansen with a smile. Old Fox, Hansen muttered to himself. He had expected that if he agreed to give out blessings, he would receive something valuable in return. But it now looked as if he wouldn't earn anything extra, and he would have to do an additional task on the leader's behalf. You can ask me to do anything, Sky Palace leader. Even if it means I will end up destroyed and dead, I will do my best in such a task. I would never ask for anything in return. Hansen lowered his head and bowed. Is that so? You really won't try to take advantage of the situation? If Hansen hadn't said the last few words, Sky Palace leader would have probably believed him. However, it was obvious from what Hansen said that he had been looking for some goodies. If you are willing to do this, I will deal with all the people who come to seek your blessing. You can decide when you want to bless them, or if you want them at all. But if you can do this well, I will still reward you, Sky Palace leader said dispassionately. What is it that you want me to do? Hansen had started to grow worried as Sky Palace leader spoke. If Sky Palace leader was establishing terms like this, whatever task he wanted to give Hansen had to be complicated. Go to the very high, Sky Palace leader said simply. Why? Hansen was shocked. He looked at Sky Palace leader with confusion. He remembered Sky Palace leader saying that he didn't want Hansen to go to the very high. Sky Palace leader smiled and said, We need a spy amongst them. I think you're up to the task, too. Hansen almost thought his ears were broken. Going to the very high as a spy? Hansen couldn't think of anything that posed a greater risk. The very high could see into a person's mind. If he was attempting to steal their secrets, it would only take them a split second to discover that. Espionage among the very high would be suicide. If anyone other than Sky Palace leader had suggested this, Hansen would have assumed that they were simply an idiot. The idea seemed like either pure stupidity or an elaborate way of getting himself killed. Sky Palace leader knew what Hansen was thinking, and so he said, Don't worry. If I let you go, I have a way to safeguard your mind that will keep them from peering into it. You are no good to me dead. But why would you even want me to go and spy on the very high? Hansen asked carefully. If he was even going to consider doing this, he had to know more. He needed the details because going to the very high for ulterior motives was a very dangerous game to play. It is very important to me. I need you to find someone within the very high. If you hear news of this person, you need to relay it back to me. You don't have to do anything more dangerous than that, Sky Palace leader said. I'm not very good at looking for people, and I'm not very skilled at socializing. I'm afraid I might fail your task. Hansen didn't want to go, so this was his way of rejecting the offer. Sky Palace leader looked at Hansen and coldly said, When you finish this mission, I plan to give you the Constellation C for you and your family. It looks like you aren't interested though. So, never mind. It is fine. Leader, the Constellation C you reference, is it the Xenogeneic space outside the Shining Star system? Hansen's eyes opened wide as he asked Sky Palace leader. The Constellation C was a Xenogeneic space that had been discovered some time ago. It was in a part of the universe that belonged to Sky Palace. It was practically in Sky Palace's backyard, so the only way to enter it was through Sky Palace. The Constellation C was connected to the Shining Star system and an underdeveloped, barren system. It was a very unique place, and it showed great promise if anyone ever developed it. Plus, the Constellation C was very rich in resources and raw materials. Many elders within Sky Palace wished to take control of the Constellation C, and they had begun to fight over it. But because the fights had grown too violent, Sky Palace leader decided to seal up the Constellation C and not give it to anyone. Now, Sky Palace leader said he was going to open up the Constellation C exclusively for Hans Senator, he could build a family there. He wouldn't just be permitted to use it, the leader was going to let Hansen govern the Constellation C. It would become Hansen's territory. If he wanted to, it might even be possible to build a human empire there. Other factions wouldn't be able to meddle or interfere in Hansen's affairs. Unless Hansen opened the Constellation C's borders to travel, no one would be able to wander in. Plus, 
The constellation sea still had Sky Palace as a shield. It wouldn't end up besieged unless the whole of Sky Palace fell first. Good memory. It is the constellation sea near the Shining Star System. Yes, Sky Palace leader answered. Han Sen's eyes narrowed in thought. Sky Palace leader was offering him a ludicrously valuable reward. But that suggested the task wouldn't be simple. Simply relaying information wouldn't be hard. And if Hansen could truly be taught to protect his mind, the danger level didn't warrant such a reward. Why would Sky Palace leader be willing to give him something so precious for fulfilling a task that was so easy? May I ask what kind of person you were looking for? Hansen asked with hesitation. The Constellation Sea was a good place. He wanted it, but he wouldn't be able to enjoy owning it if he died at the hands of the very high. I'm looking for a very high woman. I don't know her name, and I'm afraid her appearance might have changed from what I remember, Sky Palace leader said thoughtfully. No name? No appearance? How am I supposed to find someone like that? Hansen was shocked to hear that. Don't worry. There is a way to find her. Otherwise, why would I ask you to look for her? Sky Palace leader paused. Then, he said seriously, there is a birthmark on her chest that looks like a red heart. You will be able to see it? It is very obvious. Her chest has a birthmark that resembles a red heart? That is quite obvious, you would think. Wait. Chest. Hansen glanced down at his own chest. He looked strange as he asked Sky Palace Leader, You say you are looking for a very high woman? Yes, Sky Palace Leader said with a nod of his head. Do you think I'll have the chance to check out the chests of various women for that birthmark? Hansen felt that Sky Palace Leader might be tricking him. If he went to the very high just to check out their women, it would be a F asterisk King Deathwish. If it was an easy task, why would I give you the Constellation C? Sky Palace leader looked at Hansen and said, You don't even have to look at them yourself. Anyway, you can just ask around. Exquisite is a woman, for instance. She is more likely to have seen it. And if you can get her to tell you, then you will have no trouble. Come back in four years, and you can take your family to the Constellation C. I will give you all the support you can ask for. I will give you people, if you want. Do you want a boat? I can give you a boat. You won't have to pay taxes for 300 years, either. Chapter 2636, With Spirit Rhino Hansen was very conflicted. He wanted the Constellation Sea. If there was ever a safe place for him to develop humanity, it would be there. With enough resources and cultivation, he could make them a force to be reckoned with in the universe. That way, they would no longer have to live in small pockets scattered across the universe. He could gather them up there and truly grow their numbers. But before any of that could happen, Hansen needed his own system. The safest places in the universe were already split up by the more powerful races. Even if Hansen wanted a slice of good real estate, there was nowhere he could find a piece of that pie. Even the smaller and weaker races had ties with Sky Palace and other big races. It wasn't a matter of simply taking what he wanted and being done with it. Taking a developed system wasn't an option, and a wild system would be too dangerous. Such places weren't suitable for low-level creatures and people to live in. Sky Palace was offering him a xenogenic space. For Hansen, that would be a perfect place to develop humanity's presence within the Geno universe. Think over my offer. You don't have to rush in giving me your answer. Just tell me when you have decided. Sky Palace leaders said. Hansen nodded. He needed to think about this seriously. He couldn't make a decision on a whim, especially one so big. As Hansen turned to leave, another matter came to mind. Palace leader, Uncle Yukuin has asked me to kill a deified Xenogeneic with him. Do you think I should go? Brother Yukuin? Sky Palace leader fell silent for a moment, then said, I know what happened to him. If you think you can do it, then you should go and help him. Brother Yukuin has endured a difficult life. Now that he had received Sky Palace leader's approval, Hansen was more than okay with going to meet with Yukuin. And so, that was what he did. He wanted to see what sort of deified the man wanted to kill first, though. Then, he could decide if he could truly help. If he did decide to help, he would try his best, but there were still multiple factors to consider before he accepted. After Hansen left Sky Palace, he contacted Yu Jing. He told Yu Jing what he planned to do, and Yu Jing was happy to quickly arrange for him to meet with Yu Kuen and discuss the proposal. Should I go or not? Going to the very high was a very difficult decision for Hansen to make, but it wasn't something he could allow others to determine for him. Hansen laid out the pros and cons of this idea many, many times. 
and he ultimately decided that yes, he should go to the very high. He wanted the Constellation C for himself. If he missed out on this chance, God only knew how many more years he would have to wait for an opportunity to get a Xenogen EX space that was as prestigious as the Constellation C. Plus, if he fought for another Xenogen EX space, it wouldn't be as safe as the Constellation C. And some Xenogen EX spaces were actually overdeveloped. They might not allow Hansen to procure as many resources as he wanted. It looks like I need to go to the very high then. Luckily, I have found a way to counter their spying techniques. If Sky Palace Leader's way doesn't work, then I have my own method. And if that method doesn't work, either, I will have to be like Ning Yu and rely solely on my own will to support myself. Hansen gritted his teeth. The odds against him seemed daunting, but if Ning Yu could do it, he believed he would be able to as well. But Hansen didn't immediately answer Sky Palace Leader. He wanted to sort out matters with Uncle Yu Kuen first, so he could have time to think it over a bit more. There was no need to rush a decision as big as this one. Yu Jing hurriedly established a time for Han Sen and Yu Kuen to meet. When Han Sen saw Yu Kuen, it was hard to believe Yu Kuen was of the same generation as Sky Palace Leader. That was because Yu Kuen looked considerably older than Sky Palace Leader. Han Sen didn't know how old Sky Palace Leader was, but he appeared to be in his 40s. It seemed very gentle, but there was something perverse about him. He enjoyed messing with people. But Yu Kuen looked like a very old man, by comparison. His hair was gray, and his face was wrought with wrinkles. Most importantly, his expression looked old and tired, too. He was very dull-looking. He barely looked like a living being. Yu Kuen was calm. He told Hansen about the deified Xenogen he planned on killing, but he didn't look very confident that Hansen could help him. After hearing what the man said, Hansen fell silent. And then, he honestly told Yu Kuen, Uncle Yu Kuen, a trade needs to be fair and equalized. I can help you fight this deified Xenogeneic. If I fail, I won't take anything. But if we successfully slay this deified Xenogeneic, what will you give me in return? Yu Kuen seemed to think about that question a bit. After hearing Han Sin's speech, he pulled something out of his pocket. He set it on the table in front of Han Sin and calmly said, Try your best. Whether or not you succeed, this is yours. Han Sin eyed the thing that Yu Kuen placed on the table. It was a small wooden statue carved into the shape of a beast. It looked like a rhino. It was the size of a man's hand, and the wood seemed to have yellowed with age. It looked ancient. Hansen didn't understand what it was. It looked like a decorative trinket that someone might put on a shelf in their house. It didn't release any power, so it didn't seem like a powerful xenogenic treasure, either. Yu Jing was standing to the side, and when he saw that wooden rhino, he looked like he was about to scream. Isn't that the wood spirit rhino? Uncle Kuen, are you really willing to let it go? Hansen looked at Yu Jing, and Yu Jing went on to say, A long, long time ago, our race found a butterfly class plant inside the systems of chaos. Many of our people worked together, but they were only able to retrieve a piece of wood that was one foot long. And then, a deified carved the wood into its spirits. Three small statues were created in the shapes of an elephant, a rhino, and a horse. This wood spirit rhino is one of them. After pausing, Yu Jing went on to say, Although the wood spirit rhino wasn't refined into a treasure, carrying it can aid a warrior's body. It can fill your body with health and make you livelier. It is especially beneficial for people who have been injured. Carrying the wood spirit rhino can heal someone's self-body. Of course, that isn't what is most important about the wood spirit rhino. The most important thing is that the deified who made them also created three geno arts and left them inside the three wood spirits. If someone gains possession of the statues, they can obtain the Geno Arts inside. The Geno Arts of the Wood Spirit Elephant and the Wood Spirit Horse have already been learned by others. They were the Giant Spirit Statue Punch and Sky River Swallowing Day skills, respectively. They were the first two Geno Arts. They are famous secret Geno Arts in Sky. Palace. Hansen jerked in surprise when he heard the name of these two Geno Arts. He had heard of them before. They were the most popular secret Geno arts in Sky Palace right now. Even the heirs of many Sky that wanted to practice the Geno arts had to go through a lot of trouble to be granted permission to learn them. Furthermore, students below King class couldn't even begin to learn them. But just because a skill was restricted didn't mean it was attractive to Han Sr. But what Yu Jing said next totally changed Han Sen's mind. When the first two people learned the Geno arts of the Wood Spirit Elephant and the Wood Spirit Horse, 
They received powerful with spirits. It accelerated their practice. One went from king clash straight to half deified. The other went from half deified to deified. Chapter 2637 Bower's Little Book Hansen eventually agreed to accept the wood spirit rhino in exchange for helping Yukuin slay a deified Xenogeneic. Yukuin had carried the wood spirit rhino for hundreds of years. He had never been able to understand what was inside it, and after losing hope of ever learning its secrets, he was finally willing to use it as payment for Hansen to help him slay a deified Xenogeneic. If Yukuin obtained a deified Xenogeneic gene, he could use it to help him become deified. Keeping the wood spirit rhino as a mere ornament would be useless. He wanted to give it to his heir, but his only son had died in an accident. No one else was able to carry on his legacy. What a poor man, Hansen thought, playing distractedly with the wood spirit rhino. Yukuin had already given Hansen the wood spirit rhino. It was his whether they succeeded or not. Hansen's personality was a little strange. If someone was trying to trick him, then he wouldn't let them get away with it no matter how bad the situation was. But for someone like Yukuin, who was willing to pay up front, Hansen would help him no matter the cost. The wood spirit rhino was very beautiful. It gleamed like jade. Although it was made of wood, it was heavier than a lump of gold. The strange thing was, Hansen was unable to discern the wood spirit rhino's power even though he was holding it. It seemed like an ordinary wood carving. It didn't look like a piece of butterfly glass wood. Hansen didn't think Yukuin had given him a fake item, and that was because he had tested it. He tried his hardest to destroy the little statue, but it didn't buckle and break. That was verification of its deified status. But despite its resilience and beautifully polished surface, it didn't have a strong presence. Does that mean the wood spirit rhino doesn't have power? Is it merely the secrets within that hold its strength? If I can open and learn its secrets, can I gain access to the power myself? Hansen kept wondering. He stared at the wood rhino spirit. The wood spirit rhino's carving appeared so alive, but there was no text or symbols on it. There was no semblance of a mind left behind. Hansen prodded it a few times and used his Dongshan area in the purple eye butterfly to examine it. He was unable to find out anything tricky about it. No matter how he viewed it, it was an ordinary miniature rhino carved out of wood through no extraordinary means. Aside from the material used, he could not discern anything special about the thing. As Hansen was investigating the wood spirit rind, Bauer had somehow managed to climb onto his back. Her head was next to Hansen's shoulder, and she stared at the wood spirit rhino in his hands. Daddy, what are you holding? This wooden statue has a secret in it, but I can't tell what it is, Hansen said. Let Bauer see it. Bauer jumped down onto Hansen's chest and stole the wood spirit rhino out of his grip. Her little hand started to shake the wood spirit rhino. Then, suddenly, Hansen noticed a yellow gleam like moonlight shining in the eyes of the wooden item. The light projected onto the wall, revealing some text. Bauer, how did you do that? Hansen asked in delighted surprise. He had been watching her the whole time, but he didn't know how she had managed to summon the light coming out of the wood spirit rhino's eyes. Bauer had only touched the wood spirit rhino for a second or two, and Hansen had watched the position of her hands at the time. He tried replicating the move she had made, but he was unable to make the statue light up. It is so easy. Just pat it on the head, Bowis said as she patted the wood spirit rhino's head. With that, the light in its eyes suddenly disappeared. Let me try. Hansen reached his hand out and patted the rhino's head. There was nothing. Bauer reached out her hand and pressed the head, which made more light shoot out of the statue's eyes. Hansen's inability to achieve the same results depressed him. He couldn't be bothered to figure out why Bauer was able to succeed where he had failed, though. Instead, he focused on recording the text the wood spirit rhino was displaying. It was a skill called heart connection. Hansen seared the Gino art into his memory, but he didn't find the power mentioned by you. Jing, does this mean I can only get the power from the wood spirit rhino if I learn the Gino art? Hansen guessed. Then, he tried researching the heart connection Gino art. Since the name sounded rather romantic, Hansen expected the Gino art to be spiritual in nature. Perhaps it would have interpersonal properties. Hansen soon discovered he was incorrect. The Gino art wasn't at all spiritual, it was actually rather violent. It was a Gino art that gathered up power, then released it in a sudden burst. It was like a rhino's ramming attack. Power was gathered like a charging rhino gaining momentum, then concentrated into the rhino's horn. 
but the side effects could be devastating. After an attack was unleashed, your body would become weak. Your power would be sucked dry, and it couldn't be used anymore. This is a very dangerous Geno art, Hansen complimented. Although the Geno art wasn't as destructive as Break Six Skies, it had the precision of a steel needle. It could pierce through anything. It was a very powerful Geno art, but it was also very unique. Break Six Skies had to be used at a distance unless the caster wanted to blow themselves up, but Heart Connection didn't have a range requirement. This Geno art could be a trump card. If I'm facing death, I can use this as one last attack to save myself. After Hansen researched it, he tried practicing it. It wasn't difficult to learn the basics, but it would take a while to become skilled with the art. Hansen gave Bauer many snacks, but she wasn't as happy as she had been. She didn't pay much attention to the snacks. Instead, she looked at Hansen and told him, Dad, I want to go to the very high. It is too dangerous there. Kids cannot visit them. You can stay and play with your annies. You like Nightmare Beast, don't you? You can go play with him. Hansen couldn't take Bauer with him to the very high. If his undercover activities were exposed, it would be difficult for him to escape. And he wouldn't want Bauer to get involved in that. Dad, if you don't take me, I will go and find Mom, Bauer said with a blink. Yes, you can spend time with Mom. That is good. And then go to kindergarten for a few days. Didn't you like that kindergarten teacher? What was her name? Oh, right. It was Lou Zime. Hansen nodded. Bauer smiled and said, I'm not going to school. I'm going to snitch to mother. Snitch about what? Hansen looked at Bauer with interest. He didn't think he had any dirty secrets to hide. Bauer lifted her hand and used her fingers to count. Sister Sui, Sister Isha, and that's Sister Exquisite. Bawa quickly realized she wasn't going to have enough fingers on one hand. She was about to continue when Hansen stopped her and said, There's nothing between me and any of those women. You can't threaten me with that. Owning the whole universe is pointless, and only your smile is eternal. I hope the next time I see you, I will be able to see you smile. Bawa replicated Hansen's speech and tone. She looked innocent while she said it. You know, I remember a lot. I think I will tell mom all about this. She will be very touched and happy. After that, Bauer pulled out her little book. She opened it, and Hansen saw that it was filled with childish scribbling. It was Bauer's writing, and they were all of the things Hansen had said. Hansen's forehead broke out in a cold sweat. Those words hadn't been inappropriate when they were spoken, but if they were read without any context, problems could arise. Ahem, Bauer. Fathers and their daughters should communicate well with each other. There shouldn't be any conflict between us, right? Hansen looked at Bauer and her little book. Bauer put away the little book and laughed. Yes. So, does that mean Bauer can follow? Daddy to the very high? Chapter 2638 Demon Abyss Beast King Mr. Zwayu, you couldn't ask Hansen to kill the Demon Abyss Beast King for him. They are going to the Demon Abyss. In the hall, a Sky Palace student was talking to a Sky Man in black armor. He had gray hair. Yukuin has practiced the Deep Abyss Demon spell. If he gets the Demon Abyss Beast King's deified gene, he can become deified. But the fact that he has managed to secure Hansen's assistance is surprising, Zuiyu said emotionlessly. I have heard he gave Hansen the Wood Spirit Rhino in exchange for his services. That is why Hansen agreed to help, the Sky Palace student said. I see. Then, it makes sense, Zuiyu nodded. Mr. Zuiyu, Yukuin is still under suspicion. Should we prohibit Hansen from helping him slay the demon Abyss Beast King? Zuiyu shook his head. No. Hansen is like a son to the leader. If he is willing to help Yukuin, Sky Palace leader must have given his approval. We will take the back seat and observe for a while. After a pause, Zuiyu said, Go and find Shiya. Tell her to prepare. She will be going to the demon Abyss on a trip with me. You are going to the demon Abyss yourself? The student asked with shock. We do not understand our target yet. This will be a fine opportunity to learn more about Hansen and Yu Kuen, is what you said coldly. As Hansen and Yu Kuen traveled toward Demon Abyss, Yu Kuen seemed very relaxed. Aside from Hansen, he hadn't hired anyone else to help with the hunt. Hansen had accepted payment for the job, so there was nothing else he could do. He had no choice but to help the man. After making his agreement with Yu Kuen, Hansen had received a detailed synopsis of the Demon Abyss Beast King from Sky Palace Leader. 
The file contained essentially the same information that Yu Kuen had already given him. Hansen had a 70% chance of killing this beast. Of course, there was always the chance that the Demon Abyss Beast King would be stronger than the reports stated. It could have evolved, too. So, Hansen had to be very careful when calculating his odds. There was a lot to account for. The Demon Abyss was a giant hole in space with a massive star inside it. Space seemed to have collapsed under the weight of the enormous star. But then the star had reached an odd state of equilibrium instead of exploding as stars usually did under such conditions. The space hole contained many xenogeneics. Sky Palace students often enjoyed hunting there, but ordinary students wouldn't venture too far into the Demon Abyss. They could always hunt the low-level xenogeneics that remained on the outskirts, which would be far safer for the students than heading to the interior of the space hole. When the nearby Sky Palace students saw Hansen and Yu Kuen approaching, they all came forward to bow. It was mainly a show of respect for Han Senator they only called Yu Kuen uncle, because formality required them to. Hansen observed their faces, guessing they must have known about Yu Kuen and the allegations. Yu Kuen didn't pay any attention to their barely veiled disdain, though. With Hansen, he pushed on deeper into the demon abyss. He avoided the larger groups of xenogeneics, obviously not wanting to waste time on low rank creatures. Hansen followed Yukuan through the Demon Abyss for two whole days before they reached their destination. There, they saw the Demon Abyss Beast King talked about in Legends. There had been videos of the creature in the file that Hansen had received, but there was a big difference between seeing a creature on a video and in real life. The sight of the beast was astounding. It had a scorpion body and a dragon head. Dragon wings spread from the creature's back and it was covered in blue scales. The head had eight pairs of draconic eyes. So, there were 16 eyes in total. Its body was 100 meters tall. Even the sight of the creature was horrible and disturbing. It was sleeping on one of the walls in the demon abyss. It was like a drowsing demon. Hansen summoned his peacock king's soul robe and his six-core snake bow. Then, he turned to Yukuin. Let's put our plan into action. Sure, Yukuin said with a nod. He pulled out his blade. His weapon was a black ring blade that was close to 30 centimeters wide. It looked incredibly sharp. It was a very rare and weird weapon. Hansen drew the string on his bow, but before he could release it, the demon abyss beast king woke up. Its 16 eyes peered at Hans Sr. Hansen didn't hesitate. He fired at the demon abyss beast king, sending an arrow imbued with rainbow light soaring through space. It flew straight toward one of the demon abyss beast king's eyes. But just as the arrow approached, the demon abyss beast king's eye opened like a black hole. The arrow disappeared into the black hole, then vanished. The demon abyss beast king was not injured. The demon abyss beast king screamed weirdly. It flapped its wings, making its body shine with a shimmering blue light. As it flew, the creature's wings looked strangely beautiful against the background of the demon abyss. A writhing substance chain emerged from the creature and came flying toward Han Sr. Hansen drew his bow and fired again and again, sending many rainbow light arrows at the Demon Abyss Beast King. The Demon Abyss Beast King didn't care. Hansen aimed at several different places across the creature's body, but wherever his arrows landed, a black hole manifested. The arrows flew into them and disappeared. None of them could deal a speck of damage to the Demon Abyss Beast King's body. Boom. The Demon Abyss Beast King opened its mouth. Suddenly, a blue flood poured out of it like a volcano erupting. It was headed straight for Han Sr. Hansen's body flashed away quickly to avoid that flooding blue substance chain. He didn't retreat, though. He continued to fire his arrows, getting closer and closer to the demon abyss beast king. Hansen was like a surfer riding a tsunami that would end the world. The sky was full of blue energy, but it didn't hurt him. That primitive class demon abyss beast king couldn't do anything to harm him. From some distance away, a sky man and woman watched the unfolding battle. What powerful movements, the woman said, complimenting Hansen's efforts. His movement isn't the truly impressive thing, replied Zweyu. He shook his head and said, the remarkable thing is his ability to judge and analyze details. His body responds with perfect precision. Precision? Shiya frowned. You can see him falling back on the left. Before he fell back to the left, though, his body leaned right. And while leaning 70 degrees to the right, he fired three arrows. He did it all at the same time. He misled the demon abyss beast king, tempting the creature into spitting its demon stream to the right. 
that, in turn, forced the demon abyss beast king to go right. It gives him the space to go left. So, he has the time to move to a more advantageous position for his next attack. Details like that are in every single move. If this guy isn't just insanely OCD, then he is a born fighter, Zuiyu said. Shiya looked at Zuiyu, suddenly unnerved. Hansen's skills didn't look very special at all. But when she paid attention to the minuscule motions of Han Sen's body, it was just as Zuiyu had said. He was moving with amazing precision and planning. Shiya had formed her impression of Han Sen when she saw him fight Exquisite. Those cruel, overbearing, and violent attacks were seared into Shiya's analysis of who Han Sen was. She considered him a violent man, and so she hadn't taken the time to look for any finesse in his attacks. Now that she could see it clearly, she was shocked. The way he was fighting now was totally different than the techniques he had employed against Exquisite. It was hard to believe this fighting style belonged to the same person. Chapter 2639 Killing a Deified Again Hansen used his power to restrict the Demon Abyss Beast King, but his arrows didn't seem to inflict any damage on the creature. Black holes appeared and vanished all across the Demon Abyss Beast King's body. Whenever an arrow came close, it would be sucked into one of those black pits, keeping the damage from reaching the Demon Abyss Beast King. This was all within what Hansen had expected, though. The Demon Abyss Beast King's power and capabilities had been detailed in the information he had been given. Hansen never expected his arrows to be able to damage the Demon Abyss Beast King. He was simply buying enough time to get closer to the creature. Finally, Hansen got close enough to the Demon Abyss Beast King. Hansen spun his six-core snake bell and used it like a knife. The razor-sharp string sliced into the Demon Abyss Beast King's scales, leaving deep wounds across its flesh. Just as the file said, the Demon Abyss Beast King's Demon Abyss power can consume energy, but it cannot turn away physical damage. Hansen felt calm. The Demon Abyss Beast King became very angry after being struck. Its blue light raged with greater ferocity. But Hansen attacked again and again with the six-core snake bow, flitting around the Demon Abyss Beast King like a mosquito buzzing around a magnificent beast. No matter how loudly the Demon Abyss Beast King roared, it couldn't hit Han Senator, it then activated an area attack. But the fortitude of Han Sen's Peacock King's soul robe was enough to shrug off all the damage. The Demon Abyss Beast King couldn't do anything against him. Yukuan stood to the side, doing absolutely nothing at all. He only restricted the Demon Abyss Beast King a little bit. Han Sen continued fighting at close range, and the Demon Abyss Beast King was being dealt more and more wounds. What a scary guy. This moose set and those knife skills resemble sky palaces under the sky. But who in our race ever practiced under the sky to such a level of proficiency? Shiya asked with shock. Zuiyu was recording the fight between Han Sen and the Demon Abyss Beast King. And as he continued to record it, he said, Under the sky hasn't been complete for long. Not many students have practiced it, no. But there will eventually be more. This will be perfect learning material. Shiya shook her head. This isn't something you can just watch and learn. You need to know how to use it, and executing a skill like this would be much harder than analyzing it. To be straight with you, only practitioners who have already mastered the skill could benefit from watching this. Most students wouldn't stand any chance of becoming as skilled as Hansen, no matter how many times they watched this video. Maybe it wasn't a fluke that the very high test ranked him as an 11 armor talent. Zuiyu laughed and said, Well, Having this video will be better than nothing. I hope the sky can develop a few elites like Han Sr. I don't think we need to doubt Han Sen's capabilities any longer. A ninth tier king is killing the demon abyss beast king. Although he does use two powerful treasures, Han Sen is definitely scary. If he is a spy, he is a great danger to Sky Palace. But right now, we still don't know where he came from, she has said. If he isn't a spy, then we have gotten very lucky. This is our department's responsibility. We must confirm his identity and political alignments, is what you said. That is true, but the civilization of the crystallizes is long gone. The few that remain are vagrant, interstellar travelers. We have been looking into Han Sin's past for some time, but after finding the Kate, we lost the trail. Plus, the Kate's planet has been ravaged by war in recent years. Many of the Kate people have lost their homes. There won't be much left for us to learn, she has said, but we still have to do it. This investigation is our responsibility, and the leader takes Hansen very seriously. So, we have to find out. 
With his reputation, his influence within Sky Palace will continue to grow. As what you said as he watched the Demon Abyss Beast King battle haunt Senator the man's expression was grave. A sad wail rocked the whole of the Demon Abyss. The Demon Abyss Beast King's head was chopped off by the six-core snake bow. Demon blood cascaded down like rain. Xenogeneic deified hunted. Demon Abyss Beast King. Xenogeneic gene found. As this happened, an announcement sounded inside Hansen's head. When he heard no mention of a beast soul, he looked disappointed. Yukuin began hauling the Demon Abyss Beast King's body out of Demon Abyss. He couldn't hide it from the Sky Palace students. They could guess that Hansen and Yukuin had killed the Demon Abyss Beast King together. As everyone discussed Hansen killing the deified Xenogeneic, a student found a video showing Hansen's performance in killing the Demon Abyss Beast King. That video was quickly distributed all around Sky Palace. Brother Han is using Under the Sky. That belongs to the sky, doesn't it? Under the Sky can be that powerful? Of course it is strong. I heard Brother Han actually contributed to its modifications. It looks like I should start learning Under the Sky then. Yes, we should. When Brother Han gets back to teaching, we should ask him. Many of the students in Sky Palace started to discuss Han Sin's use of Under the Sky, but after Hansen saw the video himself, he could only frown. It looks like Sky Palace sent someone to watch me. Otherwise, there's no way someone could have filmed a video like that while we were fighting, Hansen said. Hansen kept thinking. He decided to agree to Sky Palace leader's request that he join the Very High for four years. When he returned, he would be given the Constellation Sea all for himself. When Sky Palace leader heard Han Sin's decision, he didn't sound happy. He said grimly, If you want to go, there is something annoying you must do before your departure. You cannot leave. Otherwise, what annoying thing? Hansen frowned. He had thought that making the decision would be the difficult part. What had gone wrong now? Sky Palace leader squinted his eyes and said, Exquisite wanted you to go, but you beat her and made her give up all hope. If you want to go, you need to make Exquisite select you once more. You will have to clean up this mess yourself. Hansen's mouth hung open. After a while, he said, what is this? If I had known, I wouldn't have beaten her so badly. Don't be so depressed. Beating her might not have been a bad thing. At least now she will look at you differently. And that means she will hold you in higher esteem. This way, you will have more freedom, Sky Palace leader said with a laugh. Can't you send someone to apologize on my behalf? Hansen asked, trying not to cringe. He had beaten her badly and forced her to face painful realizations, all because he didn't want to go. Now he had changed his mind. After Hansen thought about it some more, he realized he might have been a bit of a cretin. You are the one who beat her. It is now up to you to change her mind again. Otherwise, even if you somehow reached the very high on your own, only trouble would await you. Why not get it sorted before you go? Sky Palace leader patted him on the shoulder and went on to say, Don't mess this up. I have faith in you. Hansen had no idea how to deal with this situation, but he wanted the constellation C. He had to do what Sky Palace leader was telling him to. Chapter 2640, Outer Sky. What should I tell her? Am I just supposed to walk up and tell her that I want to join the very high despite everything that happened? I would feel so cheap after the fuss I made, Hansen thought. He was on his way to the sky's water house. He considered many different ways that he might approach the subject with exquisite, but nothing he came up with seemed very good. When Hansen arrived at the doorstep of the water house, he came face to face with Exquisite. She still looked rather pale. She opened her mouth to speak, but no sound came out. I can't jump straight into this conversation. I just can't, Hansen thought, suppressing a wry smile. What are you doing here? Are you looking for me? Exquisite asked Hansen, her face completely expressionless. It seemed as if her failure in the fight hadn't affected her as much as he had expected. She seemed a little tired. But other than that, she looked the same as always. I. Well, I'm here to see if you have recovered yet. As soon as Hansen said that, he wanted to slap himself. It sounded as if he was there to rub her loss in her face. I have almost healed. Exquisite didn't move. That's great. That's great. Although Hansen wasn't eloquent on the best of days, he normally wasn't this awkward. This time, however, he was lost and fumbling. He didn't know how to say what he wanted to. Exquisite stared back at Hansen, allowing an uncomfortable silence to settle between them. Hansen opened his mouth a few times, but he couldn't summon the words. In the end, he said, then, 
I will not disturb your recovery. After that, Hansen got up and prepared to leave. He felt so nervous. He was unable to tell her what he wanted to. Then he heard someone giggle. Exquisite suddenly laughed. It shocked Hans Senator he didn't know what she was laughing about, but she sure looked like a far finer woman when she did. Exquisite saw Hansen's glance. She blushed for a moment, and then her face returned to its impassive expression. She met Hansen's gaze and said, Sky Palace leader told me you have thought over the offer. You are now willing to follow me to the very high. Is that true? That old B asterisk starred sold me out again. Hansen swore in his head, suddenly looking even more uncomfortable. He didn't think Exquisite knew why he had come to visit her, but it seemed as if she was expecting him. And there he was, making a fool of himself. No wonder Exquisite had felt compelled to laugh. He could see the humor, though, and he knew that someday, he would look back on this and chuckle. At that point, Hansen realized that being embarrassed wasn't doing him any good. He relaxed and nodded. Yes, I would like to go to the very high with you. I hope you don't mind accepting me, even after everything that has happened. Why did you change your mind? Exquisite asked, still not moving a muscle. There are many reasons, and I can't explain them all. What is most important for me, though, are the resources I will need. Hansen's explanation was very vague. I'm going back to the very high in two days. You should prepare yourself, Exquisite said. Hansen was shocked. He hadn't thought Exquisite would be so easy to talk to. She agreed to take him on very quickly. Hansen opened his mouth, but again, he wasn't sure what to say to her. Since the start of this conversation, it had felt as if he had done nothing but say the wrong thing. So, Hansen just decided to bid her farewell for the time being. When Hansen left, the remote expression on Exquisite's face evaporated. She suddenly seemed very conflicted. There were only two days for Hansen to prepare. Fortunately, there wasn't much for him to actually take care of. He only told the people closest to him that he would be leaving soon. When Hansen told Lone Bamboo, Lone Bamboo quietly asked, You still decided on going? If I don't go, I won't be able to get my hands on the Constellation Sea. I must go, Hansen said glumly, spreading his hands in a helpless gesture. I hope to see you back here alive, Lone Bamboo ultimately said after a long pause. Don't say it like you expect me to end up dead. I will be back in four years, Hansen said with a laugh. If you were going like a normal silkworm, then four years would be a short time. But you have an ulterior motive for signing up. Your trip to the very high will be dangerous, and your chance of surviving is low. Lone Bamboo clearly didn't know much about tact, but what he said was the truth. Looking for someone wasn't a crime, but lying about his intentions wouldn't be taken kindly by the very high. If he was found out, there was a high chance of severe consequences and punishments. But Hansen was confident that there was a way to stop the very high from looking into his mind. If he hadn't been sure he would be okay, he wouldn't have risked going to the very high at all. After he got everything ready, Hansen headed back to Black King City one last time. He said goodbye to the people there, then he went to see Sky Palace Leader. Sky Palace Leader said that he had a method that would keep the very high out of Hansen's mind. Although Hansen didn't place much faith in the idea, he did not mind hearing the leader's technique. Two days went by in a flash. Hansen brought Bauer and Exquisite to a ship that would take them away from Sky Palace. Exquisite plotted a course for their destination. Many creatures had been chosen by the Very High over the years, but even now, not many people knew where the Very High actually resided. According to what Sky Palace leaders said, the Very High's Xenogenic space could be moved. It wasn't in a fixed location. Unless someone had just been there, it would be impossible to determine where it was. It is a Xenogenic space that can move. Hansen didn't think it was all that special. He had already seen Sky Palace use the Chase Star Whip to move Narrow Moon. He wagered that if Sky Palace could do it, the superior very high could very likely do the same. Moving a Xenogenic space shouldn't have been too difficult for them. After the ship departed Sky Palace, Exquisite enabled autopilot for the ship to command itself. She pulled out a little leaf-sized ship. It hovered in the air, then began to swell. It became the size of an ordinary ship. We are taking the ship to the very high? Hansen and Bauer looked over the second ship with curiosity. Only this ship can take us back, Exquisite said. She got onto that new ship and sat down in the front. Hansen brought Bauer onto the small ship. After they sat down, Exquisite tapped the surface of the ship. The robot-shaped ship suddenly started flying. In one moment, the ship broke space and slipped into subspace. 
When Hansen saw the very high xenogenic space, he was awestruck. The very high xenogenic space seemed to reside in subspace. Before this trip, Hansen never even would have imagined that it was possible to maintain a landmass within subspace. Hansen was flabbergasted. He was numbed by the vista. Do antimatter worlds really exist? Hansen murmured to himself, gazing out the viewports of the ship. Actually, this place is a buffer zone between the real world and antimatter worlds. This isn't a true antimatter world. You can call it subspace, but we call it outer sky, Exquisite explained. Has this land always existed here, or was it moved here? Hansen asked, looking at the heavenly landmass in front of him. Chapter 2641 Testing Talent Again Exquisite didn't answer, and the two of them continued on toward the heavenly land. Flocks of phoenixes flew overhead, and holy springs were suspended in the air, surrounded by clouds. Giant dragons walked majestically across the ground, which was covered with many strange flowers and rich green grass. There were many rare animals, too. There were strange and exotic things everywhere that Hansen looked. Within seconds of landing, Hansen had seen three deified xenogenics. One of them was a deified plant. This is so scary. I understand now why the very high are regarded as the greatest race in the universe. There are so many resources here. The mighty extreme king have far less than this. No. They can't even be compared. Put side by side with the very high, the extreme king would look like a group of hobos. Hansen was in too much shock to speak. Countless powerful xenogenics were roaming about. And in the nearby forest, deified xenogenics were everywhere. Still aboard Equisite ship, they flew onward for tens of thousands of miles. There were countless deified xenogenics nearby, but they had yet to encounter any of the very high. Ever since our race found this place in ancient times, our elders have been bringing interesting xenogenics here. After God knows how many billions of years, this is what has become of the place. But my people reproduce very slowly. There are only 200 of us left now, and we cannot use the vast majority of the resources that we have gathered over the ages. However, the creatures we have collected breed and breed. They are the fruits of our labor, Exquisite said. So, Hansen understood why the very high could make so many deified elites now. This place was like an organic treasury. With the resources available, creating deified elites would be easy. Bauer was lying comfortably on the floor of the ship, looking around at the weird flowers and strange grasses. They didn't look special, but Hansen knew Bauer. He could tell she was prepared to take action. The small boat continued to fly forward. After a while, Hansen started to think that there was a problem with the flow of time in this place. He couldn't accurately determine how much time had passed since he first saw land. Their ship was drawing close to some cloud-covered mountains, and when they came within range, Hansen finally saw that the mountains held a collection of palaces. They had been built into and around the mountains, fitting perfectly between them. Faintly obscured by the haze of the clouds, it was like a picture of heaven. When the ship landed at the foot of the mountains, Hansen noticed a stone staircase. It led all the way up to the stone palace at the mountain's peak. There was a very high man descending the steps. Exquisite, you have returned. Perhaps there was such a thing as a place where the grass was greener, for being born in such a heavenly environment seemed to breed people gracious enough to befit it. Second brother. Exquisite stepped off the ship and bowed before the man. The man waved his hand, signaling for her to refrain from such politeness. He looked at Hans Sin and saw Bauer sitting on his shoulder. He frowned. Third sister, why have you brought two people? Which one is your silkworm? He is Hans Senator, I selected him. That is his daughter. He had to bring her with him because there was no one else willing to look after her in his absence, Exquisite explained. The man nodded and stopped looking at Hans Sin and Bauer. He told Exquisite, Go. The altar is ready. We may complete the contracts now. Exquisite nodded and told Hansen, You guys follow me. Don't stray too far. Hansen nodded. He stepped off the ship. As soon as he left the boarding ramp, his body felt as if it was being crushed by a mountain. He moved a bit slower than usual. The environment of outer sky is different from that of the outside universe. You'll just have to get used to it, Exquisite told Hans Sr. Hansen nodded. He remained silent and followed Exquisite up the grand staircase. He glanced around. Sister, you could have chosen lone bamboo of the sky. Why did you pick a crystallizer? Crystallizer bodies are unremarkable. They cannot amount to much, 
the man said to Exquisite as they ascended the steps. He certainly didn't beat around the bush. Why does this guy not look like one of the very high? Hansen wondered as he inspected the man. The man's insult hadn't bothered him. The fellow looked different from Lee Keir, Bishi, and Exquisite. He looked fairly average, in truth. He didn't appear to be as cold as the other very high that Hansen had encountered so far. Exquisite said something noncommittal, clearly not interested in the conversation. The four of them reached the halfway point on their journey up the mountain. There, they found a stone pavilion residing on a stone platform. The stone pavilion's name was written as Half-Life Fate. Hansen didn't know what it meant, but another man soon approached. He waved his hand at Hansen and said, You've come here to be exquisite, silkworm? According to the rules of the very high, only someone with a nine armor talent is eligible to sign the contract. Allow me to test you. The man didn't seem to know Hansen had already been tested. He walked him to the pavilion and opened a stone canister that was cradled by a stone table. When the lid was removed, Hansen could see another god spirit touch lying inside the canister. Give the god spirit touch a drop of your blood and wait for the results. The man pointed at the god spirit touch for Han Sr. Second brother, there is no need to test him. Brother Bishi has already tested him with a god spirit touch. He has an armor talent figure of 11. He is more than suitable to be a silkworm, Exquisite said. An 11 armor talent? He's just a crystallizer. He cannot have an 11 armor talent. You're joking with us, surely. Or did Bishi make a mistake? The meager talents of crystallizes aside, even we of the very high very rarely produce offspring with an armor talent of 11. So he still needs to undergo this test. I don't want a mistaken test result to delay this process. The man's mouth was like a machine gun as he kept talking. Hansen didn't bother paying attention to the man's rambling. He approached the stone canister and lifted the middle finger of his right hand. He squeezed out a drop of blood and gave it to the god spirit's touch. Exquisite's eyes locked on the god spirit touch. Despite what she had said earlier, she did want to find out if the test conducted before was legitimate. Saying Hansen had an 11 armor talent still seemed ludicrous, so a second test was warranted. The man stared at the god spirit touch, too. He didn't believe a crystallizer could have an 11 armor talent. He thought something must have happened when Bishi tested Hansen, and that was why the result was incorrect. They all stared at the god spirit touch intensely. But after the god spirit touch consumed the blood, it stopped moving. They kept watching for some time, but the creature remained completely still. It didn't even shed a single shell. Exquisite was surprised, and the men thought this was strange. No matter how bad a crystallizer was, there was no way the bug wouldn't discard a single shell. Weird. Is there a problem with the god spirit touch? The man reached out a finger and brushed it against the god spirit touch's head. His face twisted with confusion as he said, There's nothing wrong with the creature. It is just the same as before. How could this happen? Feed him another drop of blood, the man told Hansen after he examined the god spirit touch. Hansen didn't know what to make of this turn of events. He did just as he was instructed and squeezed out another droplet of blood to feed the god spirit touch. Chapter 2642 Signing the Contract When Hansen placed the second drop of blood before the god spirit touch, it didn't behave any differently. It swallowed the droplet, then returned to its previous, motionless state. The four waited around for a long time, hoping something would happen. But there the bug remained at the bottom of the canister, not moving an inch. If they hadn't seen it swallow the blood, they would have believed the insect to be dead. The man frowned. He had no idea what was going on. He picked up the god spirit touch again, trying to make sure there was nothing wrong with it. Weird. No matter how bad his skills are, it shouldn't be possible for him to be entirely without an armor talent. The man continued to poke and investigate the creature, but he learned nothing. Maybe the god spirit touch is simply too old, and it can no longer shed its shell? Exquisite paused, then went on to say, This god spirit touch is the very first god spirit touch that once belonged to the Alpha, is it not? It performed tests here for much of the Alpha's life, and that was eons ago. Perhaps it really has finally succumbed to old age. The man shook his head and said, When Bishi brought you Shanshin here, they conducted the test just fine. That wasn't very long ago. Why would it suddenly stop working now? Well, aside from that, what other possibilities can you think of? There is no way that Han Sound is lacking even a single armor talent, Exquisite said. The man knew that was impossible, too. Without a four armor talent or above, 
reaching king class was impossible. If Hansen was already king class, no matter how bad his talents were, he couldn't have an armored talent less than four. This is weird, the man said with queer hesitation. He put out his finger and sliced it, releasing a thin trickle of his own blood. He let it bleed near the god spirit touch's mouth to see if the creature reacted like normal. The god spirit touch had been lying in the same spot ever since consuming Han Sen's blood. It didn't react to the man's blood at all. It was like it had become too old and numb to move a muscle. It really is growing feeble in its old age. The man put his face close to the creature, staring at it in shock. It has lived long enough. It has lived longer than most ordinary god spirit touches. Its aging was to be expected, eventually, Exquisite said. We cannot conduct the test now, the man said quietly. I don't have another god spirit touch nearby. It looks like we will have to go back and request another one. Then, we can take the test. Stop testing him. I've decided to make him my silkworm, so it doesn't matter how what armor talent he has, Exquisite said icily. But, the man started to say something, but Exquisite swiftly cut him off. I don't have time for this. I can decide who I want to be my silkworm, and look, I have made my decision. The man opened his mouth, but no sound came out. Eventually, he smiled and said, If you have made your decision to accept this boy as your silkworm, then that is fine. In that case, let us proceed to the altar. After that, the man led them the remainder of the way. They continued on up the mountain. When they reached the palace that rested on the mountaintop, the man turned and said, Exquisite, I will be waiting for you outside. If you need anything, please just ask. Second brother, please take care of this child. I like this child, so do not upset her, Exquisite said while looking at Bauer. Don't worry, Exquisite. I will take care of her, the man quickly assured her. Bauer, wait for me here, and don't be a naughty girl. Okay? Hansen put Bauer down. With Bauer's personality and power, it wouldn't go well for the man if he tried anything. I'll be very nice, Dad, Bauer said, looking sweetly up at Hans Sr. Hansen stroked her head and went to the hall with Exquisite. After they entered the hall, the hall door closed behind them. Hansen couldn't see hide nor hair of anyone else in the hall. There was an altar at its end, however, and the sight of it prompted him to ask, that second brother seems different from the other people here. Exquisite continued walking toward the altar, but on her way, she said, the children of the very high are separated into two groups. One group suffers the very high sense, whereas the others can practice the geno arts they truly fancy. Brother Bishi and I studied the very high sense. Second brother Liu studied something else. Why do you have to be separated? Hansen asked with curiosity. Exquisite twitched slightly, but she pretended it was nothing. Practicing the very high sense gradually removes our ability to feel emotions. That can harm our breeding capabilities. Now Hansen understood why they had to be separated. It was so their bloodline could continue. Otherwise, if all of the very high transformed themselves into emotionless machines, they probably wouldn't reproduce at all. The race wouldn't have lasted very long in that case. Hansen raised his head. The altar ahead looked a bit strange. There was a large platform that held a large furnace in its center. Aside from that, the altar was bare. Put a drop of your blood into the furnace, Exquisite said. She held out her finger and dropped her blood into it. Hansen had known this was coming. Sky Palace leader had told him what to expect. He lifted his own finger and quickly supplied the furnace with a drop of his blood. When the jade furnace took in the two drops of blood, it lit up. It began to glow with a shifting cosmic light, and something inside the furnace began to rumble. Hansen looked at the jade furnace with curiosity. He couldn't see what was inside it, but the light and presence of the furnace were enough for him to tell that it was stuffed with knowledge about the universe. As the light grew stronger, it began to gather on the carving on the front of the furnace. The engraved symbols were shaped into a rough triangle. The light continued to shift restlessly, and the engraving glowed brighter and brighter. And then, the light within the furnace dimmed as it all rushed into the engraving. When the triangular symbol burned like a sun, Exquisite said, put your hand against that symbol. Which hand? Hansen asked with a blink. It is up to you, Exquisite said. Men go left, women go right. In that case, I will use my left hand. After that, Hansen placed his left hand on the triangular symbol. Hansen felt as if he had pressed his hand against red-hot steel. Hansen jerked his hand away. And when he did, the light on the jade furnace's engraving vanished. 
A shining triangle was now branded on his left hand. When the burning sensation disappeared, the triangle vanished as well. Hansen could no longer find any trace of it on his skin. Is that it? Hansen looked at Exquisite with curiosity. Yes, it is done, Exquisite answered with a nod. Hansen knew that at this point, Exquisite should be able to feel what he felt and read his mind. His mind should have been an open book to her. So, he started imagining stuff to test it. In a split second, Exquisite blushed and shouted, Stop. It looks like you really can read my mind, Hansen said while looking at Exquisite. Chapter 2643, Small Jade Figure It's good that you know. Don't ever think of things like that again, Exquisite said, feigning calmness over what she had just seen. The silkworms of other races might not have known they were being watched by the very high, but it wasn't surprising that the sky knew about this, though. After all, the sky and the very high were once part of the same family and the very high had never tried to hide the fact that they spied on their silkworms. So, Exquisite didn't think it was strange that Hansen knew about this. Let's go. I will help you practice here in Outer Sky. How many resources you receive over the course of the next four years will depend on how well you perform. Exquisite turned and walked out of the palace. Is that it? Hansen asked her with some curiosity. Well, what else did you expect? Exquisite asked. Don't we need to meet with some supervisors and go through additional registration procedures or something? Hansen was confused. Since they had arrived, the only other very high he had seen was Second Brother. And Second Brother probably wasn't an important figure amongst the very high. His rank was certainly not as high as Exquisites, that was for sure. There is no need for any of that. Now that you've entered Outer Sky, your movements will be watched keenly by the leader. Since no one has come here to stop you, that means our leaders have given you their approval. You can now be my silkworm and practice here in Outer Sky. The way the very high do things is quite different, considering that they were the number one race in the universe. The very high were conducting themselves very casually. But when Hansen thought about their relaxed attitude a little more, he realized that he should have expected it. The very high were incredibly powerful, but there weren't many of them, and they had no interest in mixing their blood with the blood of another race. Plus, after they practiced the very high sense, they lost their ability to care about things. Based on what he knew of the very high, this process was proceeding logically. After Hansen left the hall, he found Bauer and second brother, Liuzhin, chatting. It seemed that they were getting along rather well. That was a surprise. Liuzhin wanted to accompany Exquisite, but she refused. He didn't push the subject further, and so he promptly took his leave. They reboard Exquisite's small ship and began flying east, away from the heavenly-looking palace. Bauer, what were you talking to Li Yuzhen about? Hansen didn't believe Bauer would have been nice enough to engage Li Yuzhen in idle conversation unless there was something she wanted. It was nothing much. He is nice. He promised me a lot of fun toys, Bauer said with a blink. Why would he suddenly give you things? Hansen asked. He said that if I tell him more about Sister Exquisite, he will bring me more stuff to play with, Bauer naively explained. Hansen thought about this, and he had a guess. If Li Yuzhen is one of the people responsible for ensuring the existence of future generations of Very High, then he probably wants to. When Hansen thought of that, Exquisite's face hardened. She stared at him and said, Don't even think about it. He has zero chance. Hansen shrugged his shoulders. He knew his assumption had been correct. The ship traveled for a hundred thousand miles before they stopped atop a little peak. That mountaintop had a wooden building and pavilion. It looked rather tidy. He thought it must have been where Exquisite lived. Exquisite set Hansen up inside the wooden building, then left. Once Exquisite was completely gone from sight, Hansen pulled something out of his pocket. Sky Palace leader had given it to him. It was a small jade figure that was around the size of his hand. Sky Palace Leader said that once she is some distance away from me, Exquisite's ability to monitor me will weaken or perhaps even disappear entirely. The distance must be considerable, though. That is what Sky Palace Leader told me. She probably can't read my seven senses now, right? Hansen tried not to think. Keeping his mind as empty as possible, he lifted the small jade figure in his left hand. The small jade figure came to life with light. The light wasn't actually coming from the small statue, though. It was coming from Han Sen's hand. The triangular brand on his hand was glowing, and it slowly began to twist into the shape of the jade figure. I can't believe Sky Palace Leader came through with this. It really does work. 
Hansen looked at the outline of the statue that was now shining from his hand. The sight of it made him ecstatic. Hansen had no idea what the small jade figure actually was. Sky Palace leader had told Hansen how to use it, but he hadn't bothered to explain exactly how the device worked. In truth, the small jade figure was a magical device that worked a little like a video camera. However, instead of merely recording visual information, the device captured data from each of Hansen's seven senses. Once he pressed the statue against the triangular brand on his hand, Exquisite was no longer able to sense what Hansen was currently feeling. Instead, she was now experiencing a recorded loop of sensation. The information that Exquisite could learn now were all things that Hansen was fine with her knowing. Hansen had recorded a lot of content into the statue, most of which were the sensations that he experienced while he practiced. If Exquisite wasn't actually watching him in person, she would assume that he was training. Let's see how this works. As Hansen held the small jade figure, he recorded more of his own thoughts and senses. It was very difficult for a human to control their emotions perfectly, but Hansen had some experience in doing so. He thought for a moment, then started making a new recording. He thought to himself, Lady Exquisite is so beautiful and cute. And she is so kind. She is the best woman I have ever known. Although I can't be friends with her, as long as I am able to keep protecting her, it is enough. After the recording, Hansen double-checked how it would come across. He made sure all of the recordings were positive and presented him in a good light. Then, he put away the small jade figure. If Exquisite was spying on his seven senses, all she would see was the content that Hansen had recorded. Hansen could choose what he wanted Exquisite to see. Of course, if they were face-to-face, -face, Hansen could set the small jade figure to run in sync. That way, he could keep Exquisite from growing suspicious. Right now, Sky Palace leader's plan seemed to be working. But Hansen couldn't be entirely certain. If Exquisite managed to figure out what he was doing, he would have to find another method of shielding his mind. As Hansen waited for Exquisite to return so that he could see if his attempts to protect his mind were succeeding, something suddenly flew in through his window. Hansen was shocked. At first, he thought it was some kind of xenogeneic. Otherwise, why would it have come in through the window instead of the door? Hansen leaned closer to the beetle-like bug that had flown in through the window. It was the god spirit touch that Hansen had seen in Half-Life Fate. He instantly sighed in relief. He knew the god spirit touch couldn't attack, so he wasn't too afraid. Why did it come here? Hansen wondered. The god spirit touch flew in front of Hansen, and Hansen reached out and closed his hand around the bug. It didn't try to evade Hansen's hand. It seemed to accept him. See. See. The god spirit touch settled itself in Hansen's palm, then flapped its wings and made some strange noises. It seemed like the little creature wanted to tell him something. Chapter 2644 The God Spirit Touch Becomes a Fairy As Hansen was wondering what the God Spirit Touch wanted, he suddenly received a thought. Give me a few more drops of your blood. Hansen was shocked. He had encountered a God Spirit Touch before, so he knew that they were capable of basic communication. This God Spirit Touch was far stronger than the last one he had seen, though. In Sky Palace, the thoughts of Bishi's God Spirit Touch had been blurry and undefined. Hansen had experienced the creature's thoughts more as feelings than as direct communication. But the mind of this god spirit touch was very clear, as if it was speaking directly into his ears. Why would I give you a few drops of my blood? Hansen looked at the god spirit touch he was cradling in his hands with great interest. Swap, the god spirit touch's voice said into Hansen's mind once more. This god spirit touch really can communicate. If they live long enough, they can evolve, it seems. This guy was around when the Very High Alpha was alive. It must have traveled the entire universe with the Very High Alpha. It really is special. Hansen was shocked. What do you want to exchange? Hansen asked. Follow me, the God Spirit Touch said. It then flapped its wings and soared out of the wooden building. Carrying Bauer, Hansen spared no time in following the little buck. He was keen to see what the God Spirit Touch was offering in trade. Exquisite had warned him not to leave the mountain. If he left it, he could be in danger. But that didn't stop him from following the God Spirit Touch. Besides, as long as he didn't go too far, there was no reason for him to be afraid. The God Spirit Touch flew extremely fast. It was faster than Hans Senator Hansen summoned all his power as he struggled to keep up with it. They flew for most of the day. The God Spirit Touch didn't fly in a straight line, 
either. It zigzagged and flew every which way. Its erratic flight pattern seemed to indicate that it was very afraid of something. Many deified Xenogenics roamed freely across outer sky, and Hansen was worried he might run into some of them. If he encountered a deified that was transmutation class or above, he would be unable to fight it. His worries were put at ease after a while, though. On his way, he didn't notice any such Xenogenics. The only Xenogenics he spotted were weaker ones that wouldn't pose as much of a threat. In the end, the god spirit touch came to a stop in a valley. Hansen could see that the valley was lush and verdant. There was a lot of vegetation there, including a large bamboo forest. The bamboo was a rich green that seemed to shine like jade. The god spirit touch flew into the bamboo forest, and Hansen pursued. They came to an empty field in the middle of the bamboo forest, and in that field, there was a patch of small white flowers. When Hansen drew closer, he noticed that the little white flowers were far from ordinary. They looked like flower fairies that were clad in white robes. Their tiny faces were lovely, and when Hansen looked closer, he could even see their little eyelashes. But those flower fairies all had their eyes closed. It was difficult to discern if they were truly living beings. The god spirit touch flew through the clearing, flapping its wings hard enough to create a little breeze. When the breeze rustled the flowers, it roused the flower fairies to wakefulness. But when they opened their eyes, their bodies shook in the wind. They all squeezed together as if they were very afraid of something. I offer these in trade, the god spirit touch said as it landed near the flowers. Again, it had used its mind to communicate with Hans Sr. What are these things? Hansen looked at the white flowers that looked like fairies. He detected a powerful life force within each of them. Flower fairies, the god spirit touch answered. What do they do? Hansen asked. God King Bees love them, the god spirit touch said through its mind again. What does that mean? Hansen didn't understand. You use them to attract god king bees. You are going to need them. While this god spirit touch's thoughts were much clearer than Hansen had expected, there were still limits to its communication abilities. It could say something simple, but explaining a complex subject was beyond the little creature. Hansen listened as the god spirit touch tried to explain. These fairy flowers could attract god king bees, and god king bees could somehow benefit Hans Sr. Of course, that was just what the god spirit touch believed. And Hansen had never even heard of a god king bee. Therefore, he couldn't be entirely sure that what the bug was suggesting would work. In exchange, how much blood are you asking for? Hansen asked, looking at the god spirit touch. One hundred drops, the god spirit touch said in Hansen's mind. That is too much. How about one flower per drop? Hold on, let me count. There are seventeen flower fairies, so I will give you seventeen drops of blood. How is that for a bargain? Hessen asked, flexing his haggling chops. Hansen wasn't in a rush to get the flower fairies. After all, he wasn't sure what sort of benefit they would ultimately provide. He was, however, very interested in the god spirit touch. It knew outer sky very well, so there was a chance the creature would be quite useful sometime in the future. Forming a good relationship with it might come in handy later on. Sure, the god spirit touch answered with certainty. How do I use these things? Hansen asked, looking at the fairy flowers. Dig out the roots and take them with you, the god spirit touch answered. Will they die? Hansen looked at the white flowers that looked like fairies. He didn't want to hurt the beautiful creatures any more than he had to. No, but plant them in your yard when you get back, the god spirit touch said. Sure. Hansen rolled up his sleeves and got to gardening. He started digging up the flowers one by one. Blood, the god spirit touch requested, flying over and landing atop Hansen's hand. Hansen didn't hesitate. He squeezed out 17 drops of blood and let them pool in the palm of his hand. The god spirit touch fell on the blood like a hungry wolf. It gulped it all down, draining the 17 drops of blood instantly. The creature's crystalline body was dyed light red. It looked like an artwork made of pink crystal. Hansen dug all the fairy flowers from the ground. While there were 17 different flowers, their roots had grown together into a single mass. The root ball was about 30 centimeters wide. The fairy flowers trembled as he worked, looking scared. Don't worry. I don't want to hurt you guys, Hansen soothed them with a smile. Those creatures were very adorable. Even if they were edible, Hansen wouldn't want to eat them. The god spirit touch suddenly flew up and away from Hans Sen's hand. It landed on the ground and started digging, drilling into the soil next to the root ball. What are you doing in there? 
Hansen asked with curiosity. I am sleeping, the god spirit touch's voice said in his mind. The creature had already disappeared under the soil, so Hansen couldn't see it anymore. Hansen asked a few more questions, but he received no response from the god spirit touch. At that point, he knew that he needed to return to the wooden house with the fairy flowers. Exquisite must know how to make use of these fairy flowers. I'll have to ask her later. Hansen flew up out of the clearing, then turned and headed back to the mountain where the wooden house was. Before Hansen made it all the way back to the house, however, the small jade figure vibrated and lit up. That meant Exquisite was back in range, she could sense Hansen again. Chapter 2645 Fairy Flowers When Exquisite returned to the wooden house, she frowned. It seemed that Hansen had already left. The further away from her that Hansen was, the weaker her connection with him became. Now, she could only sense what direction Hansen had gone off in and get a faint feel for his current state of emotion. All Exquisite could tell was that Hansen was feeling happy. She couldn't really feel anything other than that. But if he felt happy, that meant he hadn't encountered any trouble. And that suggested she didn't have to worry about him too much. He is quite daring. He's just arrived in outer sky, and yet he has already run off so far on his own. Doesn't he realize how many deified Xenogeniacs there are roaming around? Even if he uses his deified treasures to bolster his power, it will still be hard for him to survive out there amidst those ancient monsters, exquisite thought to herself. Hansen was getting close to the wooden house now, and as he approached, exquisite was able to sense more and more about him. After an hour, she could sense that he was holding a bunch of flowers. But exquisite could only feel and not see, which was a shame. She could sense how careful Hansen was being to hold the flowers without crushing them but she couldn't see what he was seeing. So, she could only guess what he was holding by judging his sense of touch. Hansen's happiness ran through her. It seemed that he might have already discovered a treasure of some kind. Fairy flowers, Exquisite realized, when Hansen was finally close enough for her to detect what he was thinking about. Hansen had collected fairy flowers. He didn't know how to use them, though. So, he was bringing the flowers back to ask her what they were for. How was that possible? Exquisite couldn't believe Hansen had somehow managed to find fairy flowers. Those flowers were quite unusual. Many of the very high wanted fairy flowers, but the strange plants were incredibly rare. Hansen had only been in outer sky for two days, and already he had come across fairy flowers. This really was so weird. Since Exquisite still couldn't see Hansen with her own eyes, she didn't believe Hansen had discovered real fairy flowers, though. He must have been mistaken about what he had. But when Hansen appeared in her vision, Exquisite's eyes opened wide. Hansen was holding real fairy flowers, and not just one, but several. There were 17 individual flowers on the plant. Fairy flowers only opened a single bloom every hundred million years. There were 17 flowers here, so that meant the plant had been alive for 1.7 billion years. Across the whole history of the very high, 1.7 billion years wasn't very long but it was very rare to find a fairy flower that had been growing for that length of time. Even if someone was lucky enough to find a fairy flower, it usually only had two or three blossoms. In the very high palace, there was a very old fairy flower that had 72 blossoms on it. That number of blossoms seemed to be the maximum that a fairy flower could achieve. The plant had never grown any further. That flower was called the fairy king flower, and it was the very high's most important flower. Hansen's fairy flower had 17 blossoms. That wasn't a bad sum. If he was able to grow it and keep it alive, it could help him a lot. Why did you run out there all alone? Exquisite asked when Hansen had returned to the yard. I thought I'd go check out the neighborhood. And look, I found a strange bunch of flowers. Do you know what these things do? Hansen asked, holding out the fairy flowers as if he had just stumbled upon them. He didn't mention the trade he had conducted with the god spirit touch. Although Exquisite knew that Hansen wasn't saying something important, she still listened to what Hansen told her. Then she answered, That is a fairy flower. If you can grow it, it could very well become a true god-class plant xenogeneic. But it grows incredibly slowly. It will only produce one flower every 100 million years. Once it has 72 flowers, it will become a butterfly. Whether it can become a true god after that will depend on its luck and power. After pausing, Exquisite looked at the plant in Hansen's hand and said, The plant you found has 17 flowers. It should be half deified already. If it produces one more blossom, it will become deified. 
100 million years per flower? Right now, there isn't even another but. I'm afraid I won't live long enough for it to grow its 18th flower, Hansen said with a sardonic smile. 100 million years was far too long for him to wait. No human had a lifespan that long. Maybe not. Fairy flowers don't show signs of their growth. When the time comes, a new blossom will simply sprout overnight. Maybe this plant is very close to having another flower already, Exquisite said. What use are the flowers, anyway? Hansen asked. After a moment of thought, Exquisite told him, the flower has multiple uses. It can be used to produce medicine, but unless the medicine was direly necessary, no one would use it for that purpose. Instead, people prefer to transplant the flowers into their own gardens. The presence of the fairy flower helps nearby plants and creatures to develop. Having a fairy flower in close proximity can also boost one's life force and add to one's lifespan. And, after a while, the fairy flower will attract god-king bees. That is what yields the greatest benefit. What benefit is that? Hansen quickly asked. After a god-king bee eats the nectar of a fairy flower, it will become drunk and slump down underneath the fairy flower, Exquisite said. It is about 10,000 times easier to take out god-king bees that way. If this plant can become deified and attract deified god-king bees, that would be fairly awesome. But I need one more flower before that happens. I don't know when it will grow that 18th flower, Hansen mumbled, his voice a little dull. He felt as if his luck was far inferior to the luck of others. He only needed one more flower. If he could attract deified god-king bees and kill them easily, that would be a great boost to his development. Exquisite could sense that Hansen was feeling a bit disappointed, and so she said unsympathetically, you can still attract half-deified god-king bees, which isn't too bad at all. It is a very good resource for you at your current level. I have a few geno arts. Take a look and tell me if you want one. If you would like a different geno art, feel free to tell me. Exquisite placed a few books down on Hansen's desk. Hansen picked up a few of the books and perused them. One of them, which Hansen had already practiced, was God's Wander. But Hansen hadn't known it was called God's Wander. He thought it was just a good space teleportation technique. Aside from God's Wander, there was an assortment of knife skills, punching techniques, and a geno art called Very Real Body. Very Real Body was a geno art that strengthened a practitioner's body. If he practiced it very well, he would be able to use his body to block any physical attack. Even deified elites wouldn't be able to harm him. Exquisite had obviously selected these Geno arts based on her interpretation of Hansen's character. They were all skills Hansen would be very good at. It seemed as if Exquisite had gone through a lot of effort to find them. Thank you very much. Hansen greatly appreciated her kindness. These are only what my silkworm deserves. You just need to keep practicing. If you are lacking anything, make sure to let me know, Exquisite coldly said. After pausing, Exquisite glanced at the text for Very Real Body and said, This copy of Very Real Body is only the basic version. It is suitable for people who haven't yet become deified. If you can become deified, I can get you the rest of this geno art, and you can become deified with it. Very Real Body can be practiced all the way to butterfly class. It is a geno art that reinforces your body. I noticed your body was strong, so I thought you might as well try it. Hansen agreed with her. He accepted the geno art she had brought him and planted the fairy flowers in the garden. He was going to wait until the god-king bees came, so he could kill them with ease. Chapter 2646 Underworld Lake There are a lot of resources to be earned from outer sky xenogenex, but they are very dangerous for ordinary students to obtain. This house will keep any deified xenogenex from approaching within 1,000 miles. It is hard to say what will become of you if you leave that radius, however. If you are out by yourself and encounter danger, I'm afraid I won't be able to save you in time. So, if you want to go hunting for some reason, we should go together, Exquisite said. What kind of primitive deified xenogenex around here can I hunt? Hansen asked. Since he was there, anyway, he wanted to acquire more deified resources. They are everywhere. Our people haven't raised them on purpose, but the creatures have multiplied on their own over the years. They don't bother the homes of the very high, but they can travel freely wherever else they wish to go. So, when you leave the designated safe zones, you must be wary wherever you tread. There are larvae and even butterfly xenogenics to be found. A creature like that could end your life by exhaling in your direction, Exquisite said. 
Hansen was stunned. I thought there were resources I could take freely. Why are they that dangerous to obtain? If you want resources, you don't have to go and hunt them yourself. Our race has stockpiles for your enjoyment, Exquisite said. She now spoke in a different tone of voice as she looked at Hans Sr. What have they got for me? Hansen asked. Follow me, Exquisite said simply. She led Hansen out of the garden. But this time, Exquisite didn't use her little ship. She put her hand on Hansen's shoulder, and all of a sudden, a space teleportation trick teleported them God knew how far. When they came out on the other side, Exquisite didn't release her grip on him. She used her teleportation ability again. She did this a dozen times before they came to a stop. Hansen saw beads of sweat on her forehead, and on top of that, her face was flushed red. It had cost her a lot of strength to bring him so far on a whim. We are here, Exquisite said, looking forward. Hansen followed her gaze. An odd lake lay before them. The lake was full of clouds rather than water. Hansen thought that the surface of the lake might merely have been obscured by a deep mist. But when he looked down, he realized he couldn't peer through the fog. Despite the strength of Hansen's vision, he couldn't see anything deeper than 10 meters. But all 10 of those meters were clouds and nothing more. There was no sign of water within that hanging mist. And something that shimmered was moving within the vapor. This lake is called Underworld Lake because outer sky resides between the real world and the antimatter world. It is sometimes said that this lake is a connecting point between the real world and the antimatter world, a way for us to access the antimatter world. I don't know if that is true, Exquisite explained, as she pointed towards the strange lake. No one has gone diving here before? Hansen asked with curiosity. He had heard the various theories of antimatter worlds, but what he had heard was merely hearsay. He didn't know if any of the rumors were true. People have gone in before, but the people who go down, no matter how strong they are, never return. They are never seen again, Exquisite said, her voice emotionless. Then why are we here? You aren't going to make me go down there, are you? Hansen looked at Exquisite, slightly alarmed. Exquisite laughed and said, No, of course not. Although the underworld lake can be dangerous, it is perfectly safe as long as you don't go inside. You can, however, do things like go fishing. If you get lucky, you might pull something sweet from there. We can fish in the clouds? What can we fish for? I thought you said this is connected with the anti-material world. Is the anti-material world occupied by fish and shrimp, or something? Hansen asked, raising an eyebrow at Exquisite. Instead of answering, Exquisite pulled out a spool of silk-like wire and pushed it into Hansen's hands. Over the next few days, you should take a load off and fish here. Once you catch something, it will be easier for you to understand what is going on. Hansen looked at the spool of silk and noticed that the line was as thin as a hair. It looked gray. It wasn't as shiny as actual silk. In fact, it looked fairly dull. Hansen continued to examine the thread. This entire situation was strange. She hadn't given him a fishing rod, and there wasn't even a hook on the line. Not even Jiang Taigong would excel with such primitive tools. Although that guy hadn't had a hook for his line, he had a proper rod, at least. Hansen had been given nothing. All he had was a wire. There is no fish hook, and neither is there any bait. How am I supposed to fish out anything with this? Hansen asked, looking skeptically at Exquisite. But she must have had her reasons for giving him such a tool. Put some of your blood on it, and give it a try, Exquisite instructed. Hansen put a drop of his blood onto the wire and thought to himself, Is this the very? Hire an enclave of vampires. Everything here requires blood. Exquisite could sense what Hansen was thinking. And so she blinked and said, Actually, it doesn't really require blood. It just needs your genes, in one form or another. Blood is the easiest, so. Hansen found himself speechless, but he wasn't in the mood to argue with her. The line absorbed Hansen's blood, and then it jerked and flew up out of his hand. The line nestled itself amidst Hansen's hair, then disappeared. Hansen was shocked. He realized that there was now a single strand of silver in his hair. It was the silk he had just received. But now, the piece of silk seemed to be connected to Hansen's mind. The silk obeyed any mental instructions that Hansen gave it. It could be as long or as short as he commanded it to. It was as if it was alive. What is this thing? Hansen asked, turning to Exquisite once more. It is a xenogenic treasure called Underworld Silk, Exquisite explained. It is made of cloud silk essence from Underworld Lake. 
There are no tiers of this item, and you cannot attack with it. Its fitness isn't high, either. Even an ordinary person could rip it with ease. But it is the only thing that can return from the underworld lake. You can use it to fish in underworld lake. Then why am I using my blood for fish bait? Hansen wasn't happy. Exquisite was explaining things a bit at a time instead of telling him everything up front. Hansen wasn't a big fan of that. You don't need bait. Your genes are a part of the underworld silk now. Your presence is in it now, and that presence is your bait. After pausing, Exquisite went on to say, I still have things to do, and I'm needed elsewhere for a while. Until I come back, I expect you to be fishing here. Don't go too far from this place. There are far too many Xenogeneics in this area. They won't come to the shores of the Underworld Lake, so remaining here is the safest place for you. I would like to fish, too, Bowers said. She stared directly at Exquisite as she spoke. We only have one of these Underworld silks to spare. I will bring you another one next time, Exquisite said to Bauer. Before Hansen could say anything, she used her space teleportation and vanished. Hansen's heart jumped. The underworld silk lengthened stretching past his hand and down to his feet. It snaked its way down into the underworld lake. Can I really fish something out of there? Hansen looked at the strand of underworld silk that had now disappeared quietly into the underworld lake. Hansen had serious doubts about this. Chapter 2647 Fishing Hansen was a little bit curious. He sat down near where the underworld silk disappeared into the clouds, and he decided to wait and see what happened. But after he waited for a whole hour, the underworld silk hadn't moved an inch. He couldn't tell if it was working or not. Exquisite isn't trying to test my patience, is she? Hansen wondered to himself. And then, he looked at Bauer and said, Bauer, do you fancy doing some fishing? Yeah, I would like to, Bauer said with a nod. In that case, I will give it to you. Hansen handed over his underworld silk. Don't worry, Dad. I'm going to cast some super big fish for you, Bauer said. She had wanted to try fishing a long time ago, and now Hansen was making good on a long-awaited promise. Sure you will, Hansen said encouragingly, not wanting to crush her hopes. But inside, he was thinking, there is no hook and no bait. You won't be able to pull anything out of this lake. Do you really think you are Jiang Tai Gong, who can fish with nothing but a rod and line? Bao had a stern and serious look on her face while she fished. Hansen, in the meantime, began to flip through the text for very real body. The knife skills and punching techniques were good. They were top dog geno arts for sure, but Hansen's knife skills and boxing talents were already high class. He only needed to briefly glance over the skills that Exquisite had brought him. There was no point in practicing them with any modicum of seriousness. Hansen had already trained in the use of God's wonder. He just needed to slowly reveal his proficiency with it to Exquisite. Hansen thought the very real body was extremely interesting, however. It was a skill that could reinforce his body, and at the same time, it could make his body into a weapon. Very real body had a high requirement for the practitioner's base level strength, though. Even ordinary deifieds might not have the requisite physical power for the beginner level of very real body. Hansen, on the other hand, had a body that was stronger than any half deified. The power granted by his four geno arts wasn't something ordinary creatures could match. So, fulfilling the requirements for very real body wasn't too difficult for him. In fact, this was the reason that Exquisite had given him very real body. An extreme body works as a blade. Once I learn this geno art, I should be able to fight others of the same level, even if they're making use of a xenogeneic weapon. That is pretty cool. After Hansen read through it once, he began to practice very real body but it would take a very long time for Hansen to practice and become talented with this geno art. This wasn't a task that he could accomplish in a day, and so Hansen wasn't in a crazy rush. He trained slowly, and he also practiced heart connection in the meantime. Hansen set the small jade figure into a fishing mode. Even if Exquisite turned her attention back to him, she would only sense him fishing. She wouldn't realize that it was Bauer doing the fishing for him. Bauer was still as serious about fishing as when she had begun. Hansen was surprised. He didn't expect that the normally rambunctious Bauer would be content to spend time with the slow, patience-testing, quiet art of fishing. What a shame. This fishing line seems entirely useless. Hansen thought Exquisite really was testing his patience. There was no way they would be reeling anything in. Dad. Dad. There is something on my line. Bauer suddenly shouted with glee. 
She held on to the underworld silk for dear life with those little hands of hers. No way. You've actually caught something? Hansen quickly looked at the underworld lake. He saw that the lake's mist was swirling around the underworld silk. The mist had grown more cloudy, as if there really was something down there moving about. Pull the line. Pull the line. Hansen ran behind Bauer and started reeling the underworld silk back with her. Whatever was on the other end was quite heavy, and Hansen was worried that the underworld silk might break. Fortunately, his worries didn't come to pass. The underworld silk remained undamaged as the two of them hauled it out. As more and more of the lake's mist was disturbed by the rising object, their excitement grew as well. Hurry up! Hurry up! We might have caught something big! Hansen was happily shouting. I want to eat grilled fish tonight, Bauer said. She licked her lips as her eyes became incredibly bright. The underworld silk was getting longer and longer. Hansen had no idea how deep the line had gone. He just kept pulling it in, hand over hand. Suddenly, Hansen and Bauer felt as if something on the other end of the line had torn loose. The line snapped back toward them like a broken rubber band. The two of them had been pulling their hardest when they were suddenly sent rocketing back into the ground. Bauer shot into Hansen's chest. And then, the two of them saw something emerge from the lake with the underworld silk. It arced beautifully through the air overhead, then landed next to them with a ringing noise. The two of them turned their heads quickly. They saw a giant gold sword sticking out of the ground, every inch of it gleaming in the light. Holy crap! Aren't we fishing? Why did we just reel in a giant sword? Hansen looked at the giant, luxurious sword with shock. The enormous sword gave Hansen the feeling he was looking at something owned by a rich person. The whole thing had been made of gold, and it looked incredibly heavy. It was about 1.5 meters long, and the blade was one foot wide. It looked like a small door. There were some engravings carved into the sword. There was the depiction of a phoenix, and there were jewels embedded in the metal. The sword looked very luxurious, especially the center of the handle, which held a fist-sized, gold jewel. Hansen had seen a lot of weapons in his time, but he had never seen a weapon that looked so opulent. How can you fish up something like this? Hansen mumbled as he stood up. He walked in front of the big gold sword. He reached for the handle to see what sort of weapon it was. Pang! Just as Hansen's hand touched the pommel, the brilliant gold sword shone brightly. Hansen felt as if an electric current was coursing through him. His entire body was hurled through the air. He rolled for 100 meters before coming to a stop. Oh no! It's a deified treasure. Hansen lifted himself off the ground. His whole body was covered in ash, and blood dripped from his mouth. He looked happy, though. Despite his remarkable fitness, the blade had still been able to toss him away and deal that much damage with a single touch. It was definitely a deified treasure. Any item of a lesser rank couldn't possess that much power. You can fish up deified treasure from here? Seriously? Hansen ran back to the luxurious sword. He still couldn't believe what he was seeing. Hansen stared at the gleaming sword and he finally accepted that Exquisite hadn't just been testing his patience. There really were powerful treasures that could be pulled from this lake. Evidently, some of them were even deified. No wonder the very high are so strong. Deified treasures can be pulled from this lake. This cannot be real, surely. Hansen felt as if his heart was going to leap out of his chest. It had taken them half a day to obtain this deified treasure. If they fished there for a few months, they would be blinged up in all sorts of deified kit. But when Hansen went to take hold of the gold sword again, the luxurious weapon bounced him away again. Hansen used all his power to try and hold it, but alas, he could not. However, when Bauer touched it, the beautiful gold sword seemed to rest comfortably in her hands. And it even became smaller. It shrank until it seemed perfectly suited to her diminutive size. This cannot only be used by the person who fished it up, surely. After Hansen thought of this, he threw his underworld silk into the lake again. He watched the underworld lake and thought, come on, baby, give me a big gold sword, too. I don't mind if it makes me look rich. Chapter 2648, Yellow Paper When the potential reward was high enough, Hansen could be a very patient man. He squatted down near the lake, and he didn't move for half the day. In fact, in all that time, he didn't even blink. He was hoping he would be able to fish something out. Bawa spun her gold sword around, playing with it casually. But after a while, she grew tired of the weapon. She put it away inside her little gourd. She returned to Hansen's side with her hand on her jaw. She watched him fish. 
Hansen was very jealous of her ability to use the gold sword, but there was nothing he could do about it. It was similar to when he needed to make use of wind string. He had been able to fire the legendary bow, but he preferred using the six-core snake bow due to its adherence to his will. Are big gold swords the only thing that this lake contains? Hansen wondered. He didn't think things would be that simple, though. If it was that easy to obtain deified treasures, the very high wouldn't have been beaten by sacred long ago. While Hansen was in deep thought, he felt his underworld silk twitch. The vibration ran gently through his fingers. I've got something. Hansen jumped. He quickly yanked the underworld silk back and began reeling it in. It didn't, however, feel as heavy as last time. There was little resistance, so whatever it was had to be lighter. Hansen thought to himself, it doesn't seem like it is another giant sword. Could it be a dagger instead? Or maybe an arrow? It has to be something. If it's a smaller item, maybe I can use it with my six-core snake bow, at least. Bauer happily helped Hansen pulling the line in. With the two of them working together, it wasn't long until they had brought their catch out of the mist. Just like the last time, when they pulled something out of the lake, it felt as if an elastic band had been broken. The underworld silk suddenly bounced up. Hansen was prepared this time, however. He stood solidly and didn't fall over. He stared at what was attached to the underworld silk this time. What is this? Hansen saw an old piece of yellowish paper on the end of the line. He reached out his hand and pulled the paper free. When he brought it closer to his face, he confirmed that the piece of paper was exactly what it looked like. This underworld lake is so weird. How can I fish out paper? Hansen opened the old, wrinkled paper. He noticed that there was a drawing on it. Hansen almost coughed up lots of blood upon seeing what was inside it. He quickly closed it and pushed Bauer's head away. He was not going to let her see the illustration. What the hell? What is this? Why did I fish out porn? Hansen felt depressed. Bauer had fished up a deified xenogenic treasure, whereas Hansen had pulled out a pornographic image. It was very beautiful, he had to admit. He only looked at it once, but his nose almost bled. It seems as if what can be fished up isn't fixed. If people could just randomly fish up deified treasures, the very high would be very rich. Hansen thought this was to be expected. But if there was still a chance of fishing up deified treasure, then Hansen wasn't about to miss the opportunity. So, he lowered the underworld silk and went back to patiently waiting. This time, it took a much shorter time before the line twitched again. It had only been an hour when the underworld silk began to move. Hansen was so happy, and he pulled the line. Bauer came over to help, and so they reeled in their freshest cash together again. As the two of them worked, Hansen prayed, Give me a deified treasure. Give me a deified treasure. Bo! Something came flying out of the lake. When Hansen saw it clearly, his face almost collapsed. It looked like another sheet of paper. It looked similar to the last one he had brought up. Indeed, when Hansen took the catch in his hands, it was the same old, yellow paper. He gripped Bao's head and moved it away. He opened the old sheet of paper to reveal another pornographic image. But this was different from the last one. The people depicted were the same as before, but they were doing things in a different position. Holy crap! Is this whole thing a comic? Hansen felt depressed. Dad, I want to fish, too, Bowis said, as she looked at Hans Sr. Sure, it can be your turn to try. After Hansen put down the underworld silk, he passed it to Bauer. Bauer gave him a pleased grin. She took the silk and squatted near the lake's edge. She stared at the lake intently, as if she was afraid of missing this opportunity to fish. Hansen went back to researching the geno arts he had been given. He was still interested in fishing, but he had received two pornographic images in a row. So, he was no longer in the mood. Very real body was a high-class geno art. Hansen followed the teachings and practiced with it. The cells in his body grew numb, as if electrical currents were zapping them. It was a sensation that surged through him from the tips of his toes to the top of his head, reaching into every nook and cranny within him. But the effect was still very weak. It would take a long time to practice, but over time, he should be able to turn his own body into a dangerous weapon. Dad, I got something. Bao shouted, interrupting Hansen's practice. Hansen helped Bauer reel the line in. It felt so very heavy this time, and it had Hansen thinking, another beautiful, enormous sword? Dad, I wonder what I got this time? Bauer babbled in excitement. She didn't really care about procuring more items for herself, but the mystery of what she might pull out of the lake was tantalizing. 
She was like a gambler, riding the lightning for all the life and death excitement she could find. Pull it out, and you'll find out. Hansen kept tugging, and before long, they yanked the catch out. The thing that emerged from the mist arced above them like a rainbow and fell toward them, shining like a piece of the sun itself. Hansen couldn't see what it was due to the intense gleam, but he could feel that it possessed a scary presence. He didn't dare touch it, and he pulled Bao aside. Ping! That shining thing landed on the shore. Once it hit the ground, the light grew dimmer. Hansen could look at it safely now. He discovered that the item wasn't as big as he initially thought. It was actually rather small. It was curved like a rainbow, and there were three gems shaped like a sun, moon, and star embedded within it. It looked very pretty. What is this? Hansen asked, his voice confused. It is a beautiful hair clip. Bauer happily picked up the item and put it in her hair. She turned around, looked at Hansen, and asked, Dad, does it look good? Yes, it looks very nice. Hansen said while staring at the hair clip. A hair clip? It looks like you can fish anything out of this lake, but judging from the power inside it, this item is rather extraordinary. It seems rather easy to get grand treasures from this lake. Hansen was so tempted. He told Bauer, Bauer, how about we take turns fishing? Bauer had received a beautiful hair clip. She was so happy. She nodded and gave Hans in the underworld silk. Hansen started fishing again, and he took turns with Bauer. The two of them created quite a ruckus as they fished. Come out. Give me a treasure, Hansen was shouting. A piece of yellow paper came soaring out of the lake. Ah, what is this? It looks so pretty, said Bowes' voice. A piece of yellow paper. Bowes' excited voice. A piece of yellow paper. Bowes' excited voice. The same process repeated itself over and over on the shores of the underworld lake. Chapter 2649 Meeting at the Lake Hansen looked at the thick stack of yellow papers he had amassed. He wanted to cry. Those pornographic pictures he had fished up over the past few days were enough to compose an entire book. Aside from the yellow papers, he hadn't been able to catch anything. Don't say that, he reminded himself. These pictures look kind of like a comic. If it wasn't for Bauer being there, Hansen would have liked to examine them in greater depth. Hansen looked at the Bauer. Her experience fishing had been very different. She had managed to earn all sorts of things. Although they weren't all deified treasures, the things she had collected were all better than the yellow papers Hansen had received. It looks like my luck hasn't been too good in recent times. Perhaps I should ask Mr. White to calculate my fortunes and find a way to heighten my luck, Hansen thought, considering various ways he might improve his situation. Just as it was Bauer's turn to fish, the small jade figure reacted. Hansen quickly pulled Bauer away and sat down on the lakeshore himself, pretending to be in the middle of fishing. Not long later, Exquisite teleported there. Exquisite walked over to Hansen and looked at him. She didn't see anything next to Hansen, and she said, Don't worry. Underworld Lake is often like this. Sometimes it can take a couple of days to get something, other times it can take weeks. I asked you to come here to test your luck and give you some time to practice Geno Arts. Hansen was shocked. Hearing exquisite, it sounded as if it was supposed to take a number of days to fish something out. But he had always received something in half a day, at the most. The shortest time it had taken those two to fish something out was half an hour. The average, if he had to guess, was two to three hours. Hansen had been trying to think of a way to show exquisite those yellow papers, but he didn't have to do that anymore. It looks like there are no resources I can use for practice here, Hansen said, looking at exquisite. Underworld Lake was magical but he couldn't stay here if he was only pulling out old pieces of paper. He would rather kill Xenogen EX. Don't rush anything just yet. Recently, my little sister has needed my help. I don't have the time to take you hunting. So, continue practicing here. If you have enough luck, maybe Underworld Lake will give you a pleasant surprise, Exquisite said with a smile. Hansen might have just been imagining things, but he noticed that when she spoke to him, even though she was still reserved, she tended to smile more and more. She was different from how she used to be. There was a surprise, but the surprise was so big, I wasn't sure how to take it, Hansen thought to himself. After a brief conversation with Hansen, Exquisite quickly walked away. She left a few items behind for Hansen to live off, and she also provided him with vials of Geno fluid. Hansen had actually brought his own, but he had forgotten to tell her. Hansen pulled a parasol out of Destiny's tower, 
and he also brought out a couple of sunbathing chairs. Hansen and Bowers settled themselves down comfortably on the shores of the lake to fish. As they did so, Hansen also set aside some time to research the geno arts he had been given. The geno fluids exquisite had brought him weren't bad. They were good for his body, but Hansen had yet to find a way to make a breakthrough that would enable him to become half deified. After another couple of days, Hansen gave up fishing. He let Bauer do things herself. He focused on practicing his geno arts. Part of the reason he had given up was because he had continued to receive pieces of paper. It was pointless for him to continue. Whenever Bauer fished, she would retrieve something encrusted in jewels. Each item was ornately wrought and beautifully finished. But aside from the enormous gold sword and the hair clip, Bauer hadn't gotten any more deified treasures. Clearly, deified treasures weren't easily found. Since Bauer had already been able to get two, though, that was still a fantastic result. Not everything she fished up was a high-level treasure. There were a few ordinary items in there. But whether they were high-class or low-class items, they all looked sovereignly luxurious. Suddenly, Hans Sen's eyes flashed. He picked up Bauer and pulled the underworld silk away from her. A minute later, he saw someone approach. It was second brother Li Yuzhen, the man that Hansen had met when he first entered Outer Sky. Li Yuzhen saw Hansen and Bauer behaving as if they were having a vacation, lying down on their sunbathing chairs with a parasol. There were many snacks and drinks on a table beside them. There was even a nuclear reactor mini fridge. The sight made him frown. Exquisite brought you here to practice, not to have a vacation, Li Yuzhen said coldly. What has it got to do with you? Hansen continued to lounge on the sunbathing chair. He didn't get up and he didn't even spare the other man a glance. Li Yuzhen's face looked cold. He stared at Hansen for a while. Without saying another word, he went to the other side of the lake. He pulled out an underworld silk from his head of hair. It looked as if he had come there to fish, as well. If most people of another race spoke to Li Yuzhen like that, he would have reacted poorly. But Hansen was already exquisite silkworm. There was nothing he could do to Hansen. That was one of the very high's established rules. Even if a silkworm committed a crime, it was the master of the silkworm that had to deal with it. If Li Yuzhen fought Hansen there, he wouldn't simply be fighting Han Senator, he would be humiliating Exquisite. That was why Li Yuzhen didn't do anything. With Li Yuzhen being there, though, Hansen couldn't allow Bauer to fish for him. So, he fished on his own the whole time. Hansen's situation was still mostly the same, though. He still reclined in his sunbathing chair. He tied the underworld silk to his finger so he could sense movement the moment it happened. Hansen then turned his attention back to reading through the Geno Arts. He didn't have to look at his line, though. He knew it was only a matter of time before he received another yellow piece of paper. Of course, an hour later, something pulled at his line. He pulled it out of the mist, revealing another sheet of paper. Li Yuzhen glanced over when he saw that Hansen had received something. It was just an old piece of paper, though, so he ignored Hansen and carried on fishing. With Li Yuzhen being there, Hansen felt uncomfortable. When there was no one, Exquisite could not feel him, and he was able to do anything he wanted to. If he disobeyed Exquisite's wishes while someone was there to tattle on him, however, he could risk getting into trouble. Plus, Li Yuzhen had seen what Hansen had pulled out of the lake. Now, he could no longer hide what he had retrieved. If Exquisite wanted to read the pages, he would have to let her see them. What is this guy doing here? Hansen couldn't think of a way to get the man to leave, and he couldn't leave himself. He had to continue fishing. After half the day, Li Yuzhen felt as if something was amiss. In that short period of time, Hansen had pulled three things out of the lake. They all looked like old sheets of paper. Hansen was operating at a remarkably efficient catch rate. When Hansen pulled out his third piece of paper, Li Yuzhen put away his underworld silk and walked in front of Hansen to look at the other man's catch. Let me see those papers. Chapter 2650. Different kind of luck. Why should I let you see them? Hansen asked, his voice relaxed and unhurried. He casually rolled up the paper, then turned a cold glance on Li Yuzhen as he spoke. Li Yuzhen looked at Hansen with disdain, then chuckled darkly. You are with the very. I now. Yes. And? Hansen's face remained expressionless. Li Yuzhen wasn't annoyed. Instead, he smiled and said, I just want you to know that if a very high asks something of you, you cannot say no. Oh, yeah? I just said it. What are you going to do about it? Hansen said. 
Hansen thought Li Yuzhen was going to fight him, but it didn't seem like Li Yuzhen was going to go that far. He just continued to stare coolly at Hansen, and then, the third eye in his forehead opened. His black and white pupils looked like a Tai Chi Yin Yang symbol. That black and white symbol began to spin. It looked like some invisible light was brewing within it. His gaze now looked as if it could see through everything, and it made Hansen frown. Li Yuzhen looked into Han Sin's yellow piece of paper. With a disdainful look, he said, I thought you had pulled up something nice, but it's just a pornographic picture. I overestimated you, clearly. After that, Li Yuzhen went back to ignoring Han Senator, he returned to his fishing spot and continued with the task. It was a coincidence. Li Yuzhen sat there and fished for a while. But later on, his underworld silk began to move. It shook a lot, and it appeared as if something big was on the other end. Li Yuzhen quickly pulled the line. He tried his hardest to tug it out, but the thing seemed heavy. Pang. After ten minutes of wrestling with the submerged foe, Li Yuzhen managed to pull out an item from beneath the mist of the lake. The object bounced right out of it and landed on the shore. Hansen couldn't help but look at it. He saw a big gold sword that was similar to the one Bauer had retrieved. It looked a lot rougher around the edges, though. It also seemed to lack the jewels. It was just a big gold sword that was missing its luxurious touches. Li Yuzhen looked at the big sword with excitement. He spoke to himself, saying, Gold Slash. Is this the deified Gold Slash? The seventh uncle was right. My luck has finally turned around. He picked up the big gold sword with a look of unbridled joy. He was extremely fond of his new catch. And after goofing around with it for a while, he decided to end his day of fishing. He put his underworld silk away and started to leave with the golden sword in his hand. When he passed by Hansen, Li Yuzhen looked at him. He acted as if he was talking to himself, but the words of poison were obviously meant for Hansen to hear. This is the luck that separates you from I. You can only fish up that useless and dirty pornography while I get deified treasures. Really? Your piece of crap sword is a deified treasure? Hansen said with a laugh. Such an ignorant kid you are. Gold Slash is an obscenely rare treasure to fish up from the underworld lake. It is deified at the very least. Although it is a primitive treasure, it is much better than your dirty pictures, Li Yuzhen said with a cold laugh. That means there are higher level gold slashes to be found, right? Hansen asked. Of course there are. One of our leaders managed to obtain a butterfly class gold slash, but that doesn't matter to you. Carry on fishing up your useless, dirty porn. Haha. <laughs> Li Yuzhen held his sword proudly and laughed as he wandered off. He laughed in mockery. Hansen couldn't be bothered with the man. He thought to himself, it looks like the sword Bauer got was also a gold slash. But it is obvious that Bauer's is of a higher class. Which class it is has yet to be determined, though. After Li Yuzhen left, Hansen felt a lot more comfortable where he was. It felt good to have no one watching him again. He planned to fish one more item out of the lake, then let Bauer carry on while he went back to practicing with his Geno arts. Not long later, Hansen felt the underworld silk move. Something had latched onto the line. Hansen thought it would just be another yellow paper, but the item he pulled up was black. It wasn't the same yellow paper as before. Has my luck taken a change for the better? Hansen's heart jumped. He quickly grabbed the black thing to take a look at it. When Hansen picked it up, a chill ran through him. This new item was also a sheet of paper, but it was black this time, and it was much thicker than the yellow sheets he had previously retrieved. Am I going to collect seven different colors of paper before I move on? Can I summon a dragon along with it? Hansen complained, turning the paper over so he could check it out. Hansen had a look, and the sight made him freeze. This new piece of paper was indeed quite different. The thick black parchment appeared to be the cover of a book. Furthermore, there were three words written on the front. Xian Yellow Sutra. This cover cannot be a cover for all of those yellow papers, can it? Hansen was shocked. He flipped it over and had a look at all the small words inside the cover. If the man is in chaos, the sky and the earth will be in chaos. And the sky and the earth will turn yellow. Hansen was shocked. This line of words was the prologue of the Xian Yellow Sutra. This was definitely some sort of Gino art, but it didn't seem to have anything to do with the yellow papers he had collected. Maybe this isn't a cover for the yellow papers. Maybe it's meant for another book? Hansen thought the entire situation was strange. Hansen hesitated. While Bauer began fishing, he brought out all of the yellow papers and started to piece them together. 
He noticed all of the yellow pages had numbers. So, Hansen arranged them in order of their numbers. There were many missing pages, however. The highest number was 254, but Hansen only had 20 pages in total. Hansen put them down next to the Xi'an Yellow Sutra and noticed that their size was a perfect fit. Still, he couldn't be sure if the cover was really meant for his yellow papers. Hansen thought this was a bit weird. He looked at the contents of the yellow paper, and when he looked over them, he felt a strange sensation. He thought the pictures had merely been the doodles of some horny guy in ancient times, so he had never inspected them closely. But now that he was, he noticed something. The people in the picture were covered in thin veins of blue and red. The small lines were very light. If Hansen hadn't decided to examine the papers closely, he wouldn't have noticed them at all. Few drawings were so realistic that they mapped people's veins and arteries. But after a thorough inspection, he realized they weren't blood vessels. The small, blue lines should have been meridians, and the red were likely the presence. Hansen was so shocked, and he thought to himself, this isn't a porn picture. It is a geno art. But why would a geno art look like this? It is easy to misunderstand it. Due to the fact that there were no descriptions or text, and Hansen was missing many more pages, he couldn't be entirely sure it was a geno art. But regardless, his interest in it had been sparked. Hansen took the underworld silk away from Bauer. He continued fishing, and a little while later, he fished up another yellow paper.